Well, Alfie, old boy, looks like it's another day, another dollar. Good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Lyle. Aren't you cold standing out here in this weather? A little, but I have to work. Otherwise, I'll be cold and hungry. So, what's the news of the day? I could tell you all of it, but then I wouldn't make any money, would I? If you want the news, buy yourself a paper. They're only a nickel. You're a shrewd businessman, Lyle. You ever thought about going into real estate? No, sir. Have a good day, Lyle. You too, Mr. Banks. Morning, fellas. What's the good word? Good morning, Banks. Morning, Banks. Horse feathers. Why is it so hot in here? Morris apparently has a chill. He set the heating on as high as it goes this morning. Suggs and I had to prop the door open so we didn't sweat to death. We must be raking in a fair amount this month if he can afford to do that. I sure wish that kid outside would pipe down. I know what you mean, Larry. He's giving me a headache. Suggs. Yeah, Banks? How are you today, Suggs? I can't really complain. Well, I mean, I could complain, but who would listen? How are your sales going this week? And not so great. I had a sweet old lady yesterday who was this close to buying an apartment for her cat. I'm sure things will pick up. And I'm sure you'd know, being Morris's right hand and all. Now, Suggs, that's hardly fair. You know we're all equal in here. Ah, uh, you're right. Forget I said anything. I'll just let you get back to it. Thanks. Got a minute, Murphy? Sure, but I'm still on the clock. Everything going all right with you, Murphy? Yep, everything's copacetic. Sales going okay for you? Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot better, too. You ever going to share your good fortune with us, Banks? What do you mean? You always seem to manage to get the best leads. That's pretty lucky, don't you think? I'm not sure I like what you're implying, Murphy. Not implying, just observing. Anyway, let's drop it. I'll let you get back to work. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Banks, Morris wanted to see you. Said it was important. Thanks for letting me know when I walked in, Suggs. Hey, it's been a busy morning. It must have slipped my mind. Good morning, Evan. Suggs said you wanted to see me? Have a seat, Alfie. This doesn't seem like a conversation that's going to be pleasant. I'm afraid it isn't. You know I'm not the type to beat around the bush, so here's the long and the short of it. We're not doing well. Sales are minimal and the competition is popping up all over town like a bad rash. I hate to do it, but we're going to have to let someone go. I see. Uh, who did you have in mind? That's mainly why I asked to see you, Alfie. You have more contact with Suggs and Murphy, so I think this decision should be yours. Ah, uh, well, I'm kind of on the spot here, but... I think Murphy should be the one let go. He means well, but he just doesn't perform as well as he could. Very well, if that's what you think, then I trust your judgment. Thank you for your help, Alfie. It's always appreciated. Anything else you need? Not at the moment. Go ahead and check the assignment board in the break room for today's leads. Will do. And the son of a bitch says clear as day, he means well, but doesn't perform as well as he could. Can you believe it? I'd be performing three times as well if Golden Boy didn't take all the good leads first. I mean, just because he's Hiram's son doesn't entitle him to... Hey, quiet. Somebody's coming. Gentlemen. Hello, Banks. Uh, you meeting with Morris go well? I would say so, yes. Great to hear. Well, uh, Murphy and I better get back to work. Time to make some magic. Operator, connect me to the Stamford residence in Bensonhurst, if you would, please. Hello, is this Ms. Irene Stamford? 
Yes, hello, this is Alfred Banks calling from Morrison Banks. I just wanted to follow up on the deposit you put down in the apartment in Flatbush. No, thank you very much, Mr. Contis. A pleasure doing business with you. Hmm, five sales in 30 minutes. I think that might be a new record. Alfie, can you come here a moment? What is it, Evan? I'm running late for the weekly shareholders meeting. Could you lock up my office for me? Of course. Here's the key. I'll be back shortly. What on earth was that? Sounds like Suggs is being his clumsy old self as usual. Let me know if you need any help in there. Suggs, what's going on? I was trying to change the light bulb and slipped, but I'm fine. All that's hurt is my pride. Here, let me help you clean up. Thanks, Banks. I have to get back to it now. That was a bit odd. Thanks. If you don't mind, I wanted to go over this sales sheet with you. I'm back, Alfie. Got my key? Yes, Evan, it's right... Hmm, odd. I thought I'd put it in my other pocket. Anyway, here you are. Alfie? Yes? Where are tomorrow's leads? I beg your pardon? The leads for tomorrow? The ones that were on my desk? They're no longer on my desk. Where have they gone? I have no idea. I haven't been in your office since this morning. You know I trust you 100%, Alfie, but this is a very serious matter. I'm aware of it. Look, I'll get Suggs and Murphy together and we'll look for them. Or maybe you could just look under Banks' hat, Mr. Morris. What? We both saw you, Banks. There's no need to put on a charade. Coming clean will save us all a lot of embarrassment. Is what they're saying true, Alfie? What? No, I have no idea what they're talking about. Then you won't mind me looking under your hat? Just to be sure you understand. See for yourself. Alfie, really? You of all people? Evan, please, you know me. Would I be capable of doing this? I honestly don't know what to think, Alfie. You have to admit, this doesn't look good. Well, there has to be a logical explanation, but I can tell you I didn't do this. Alfie, look at it from my perspective. The leads were in my office when I left and gone when I came back. You were the only one with the key and now they show up under your hat. What would you do in my shoes? So does this mean I've been canned? I hate to do this, Alfie. You know your father and I were great friends, and you've been an asset to this company. But for now, I think you should take an indefinite leave of absence. Fine. I see how it is. I guess I'll see you fellas around. Hey, no odd feelings, Banks. Here you go. See? It ain't even wooden. Taking an early lunch, Mr. Banks? No, I... Sure, just taking an early lunch. Well, if you need anything to read while you eat, I still got plenty of papers left. Good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Lyle. Don't suppose the news of the day can be any worse than the morning I've had. Let me have a paper, please. That'll be a nickel. Thanks, Lyle. Murder, extortion, robbery, par for the course in this city. Hmm, what's this? Merrick making waves in Florida? Miami, eh? 
I've always heard that place was nothing more than glorified swampland. But I'll be damned if I'm just gonna roll over and freeze to death up here. When I'm finished down there, the name Banks will finally mean something again. So, Mr. Merrick, let's just see what you've got to offer. Hello, Miami. Alfie Banks has a raw. Oh, horse feathers. This humidity is something else. Right, I've got my luggage claim ticket. Now I just need to find this Hotel Belmont and... Hey there! Hello! Are you speaking to me, sir? You see anybody else around, son? Come on over here and have a chat with old Doc Dammers, why don't you? May I help you with something? Pardon me for saying so, my boy, but I believe I'm the one who can offer you the help. I'm really not interested in buying anything, sir. Of course you aren't. Did you think I just fell off the turnip truck? I can tell a fellow salesman a mile away. You're here to get a piece of the action, aren't you? I... yes, I suppose I am. Then consider this your own little welcoming committee. What did you say your name was? I didn't. It's Banks. Alfred Banks. Well then, welcome to Miami, Alfred Banks. By your complexion, I'm guessing you come from up north. Yes, New York, actually. Hell of a town, but you'll find we do things a bit differently down here. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'm interested in this Coral Gables development I've heard about. Oh, straight to the top, eh? They call it Miami's Master Suburb. It's been meticulously planned and is ready to start construction at any moment. Lots are going faster than a tin Lizzie downhill. If you want to get involved there, you're going to need to talk to the man in charge, George Merrick. Where can I find George Merrick? He's got a sales office downtown, right on Flagler Street. Look for the building made of coral rock next to the Stocks and Bonds office. You can't miss it. Of course, George is incredibly busy these days and doesn't talk to just anyone. Maybe not, but he'll talk to me. I like your spirit, kid. You'll get places thinking like that. What's the current market like down here? I've heard quite a few things back in New York. People are buying left and right. It's a great time to be in real estate. Plenty of dough to be made. Every day, more and more locals and tourists come looking for their own spot of land. And we're here to sell. Mark my words, Banks. We're on the verge of something great. How long have you been in this business? Probably longer than you've been alive, son. Before this opportunity opened up, I was selling lots on Miami Beach for Carl Fisher himself. Surely you saw his billboard in Times Square. You mean it's June in Miami? <laughs> of course, everyone saw that. It's partly what inspired me to come down here. Glad to hear it. That's a perfect example of good marketing and knowing your audience. Why do you think I'm out here by the train station? New arrivals are the easiest to sell to. There's a free piece of advice for you, Banks. I appreciate the information, Mr. Dammers, but I'm afraid I must be going. Of course, eager to get started, I understand. And believe me, there'll be plenty to do very soon. It was a pleasure to have met you. Maybe I'll see you around town. I can more or less guarantee that, my boy. Hello, and welcome to the Hotel Belmont. Excuse me. How may I help you, sir? I'd like to check in, please. My reservation was made under Banks, Alfred. One moment, please. Yes, here you are. Your room will be the second door to your right when you get to the top of the stairs. Oh, someone was here earlier from the train station to deliver your luggage. It's been placed in your room. I'll just take that claim ticket off your hands for you. Thank you very much. Not a problem, sir. Please, let me know if I can assist you with anything else. Is there anything you can tell an out-of-towner about this city? Certainly. It's been growing at an alarming rate, especially in the past few years. There's no denying we're at the start of a land boom. I hear tell this new Coral Gables development is going to bring in thousands more people as well. At this pace, we could be the next Manhattan by 25. Thank you for your assistance, my good man. Happy to help.
Hello, sir. Let me know if I can be of assistance. Excuse me. What can I do for you? What sort of records do you keep in this office? All kinds. Marriage licenses, death certificates, property titles, you name it. How far back do they go? Not too far back. 30 years or so. The city wasn't officially incorporated until 1896, but I have some records going back to 1891. You let me know if there's anything you need to look up. Have you always lived in Miami? Nah. I moved down here from Philly after the war. Nice place. Can't beat the climate, that's for sure. Thank you for your help. Anytime. Pardon me, miss. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I'm just too busy for you right now. Perhaps you could come back another time? Another time? I've just come all the way from New York. Surely there's something a lovely young lady like you can do to help out a man in need? Look, Buster, I've heard it all before. Like I said, I haven't got time for you at this moment. What seems to be the trouble? Well, not that you'd care, but I need to get these letters written. And seeing as the weekly shipment of supplies has been delayed, I'm forced to do them by hand. You seem very dedicated to your job. I can appreciate that. I am, yes. Mainly because I want to keep it. Now, unless you want to come back here and pick up a pen, I really need to get back to my work. A tempting offer, but I'll have to decline. I'll be back later. Pardon me, miss. Would this typewriter ribbon be of any use to you? It certainly would. Mine wore out yesterday, and I ordered a replacement, but it hasn't come in yet. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. This will cut my work time by half, at least. My pleasure. Happy to help. Pardon me, miss. What may I do for you, sir? I'd like to see Mr. George Merrick. Take a number. Mr. Merrick is in very high demand. I'm afraid he's not currently seeing walk-ins. Would it be possible to make an appointment to see Mr. Merrick? Certainly. Let me see. Our next available appointment is... next May. What? That's preposterous. Mr. Merrick is a very busy man. I think you've made that quite clear. Come now. I helped you out with your typewriter. Now you're just gonna hi-hat me? I don't know how things work down here, but where I'm from, one good turn usually deserves another. Okay, okay. Keep your shirt on. I'll level with you. I'm not going to be able to get you an appointment, but I can tell you that Mr. Merrick keeps an eye out for fresh talent. If you can manage to do something to impress him, he may see you without an appointment. I see. What would you suggest? Well, I'm not sure, but you might be able to get something done at today's land auction. A land auction, you say? Where and when? It's set to start this afternoon, around 2 o'clock. You'll find it at the corner of Granada Avenue and Coral Way. Fantastic. I'll head over there right away. Good luck. Have you got any pertinent information on the Coral Gables development? None I'm allowed to divulge, sir. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you, sir.
Any bids for 200, 200. Well, well, fancy seeing you here. Thanks, what brings you to my humble little land auction? I'm trying to see Mr. Merrick, but it's proving a bit more difficult than I'd anticipated. Don't say old Doc didn't warn you, son. Anyway, I'd love to chat, but I'm a bit tied up at the moment. Is there anything I can do to help? Actually, there is. See those two sets of stragglers over there, separate from the crowd? They're all about a hair's breadth away from buying, but I just can't get them to budge. Take your pick. If you can convince either set to buy some houses, I just might put in a good word for you back at the sales office. The fellow by himself there seems like he won't take too much effort to convince. If you want a real challenge, you might try the crowd of five there. I'll see what I can do. boy. Oh, one more thing before you get started. I know you've got experience in this business, but I want to talk to you about seller intuition. From time to time, you might find yourself needing to persuade someone. You know as well as I do that that's all about finding a person's weakness and bending it to your whim. When you're talking to them, you can use seller intuition to your advantage. It'll give you a clearer read on people and let you figure out what you should play to in order to get them to see things your way. But enough yammering from me. Go and do what you have to do. How about this heat? I've never experienced anything like it. The name's Alfred Banks, but my friends call me Alfie. You can all feel free to do the same. I don't know if any of you have come from the Northeast, but the train ride down is certainly something else. Right then, folks. How about we make some sales? A pleasure doing business with you folks. I hope you enjoy your new homes. Nice job over there, Banks. You got a real knack for this business. Now go get some rest, would you? You don't want to overwork yourself first day here, after all.
Mr. Banks, I have a message for you when you get a chance. Excuse me. How may I help you, sir? You said you had a message for me. But yes, sir. From George Merrick at the Coral Gables sales office. He's asked you to stop by at your earliest convenience. Fantastic. Thank you. Pardon me, miss. What may I do for you, sir? I got a message from Mr. Merrick asking me to see him. Ah, oh, yes. He's expecting you, Mr. Banks. Go ahead and knock on his door there. I'll let you get back to your work. Thank you, sir. Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Merrick. I'm Alfred Banks. You wanted to see me? Ah, yes, of course. Mr. Banks. Please come in. Make yourself at home. Please, have a seat. It really is a pleasure to finally meet you, Mr. Merrick. Like I said, my name is Alfred Banks, and... I know who you are, Mr. Banks. I was well aware of your father's work up north. It seems apparent that you are eagerly following in his footsteps. You've gotten my attention. Now let's see how serious you really are. I see great potential in you, but a good sales agent needs more than just talent. He needs ability and know-how. I've got those in spades. You're certainly confident, I'll give you that. In any case, I have a few small setbacks which I need to deal with, and I think they would serve as an excellent proving ground for you. Proving ground? Think of it as an extended job interview. I'm all ears. What do you need? I can give you more details as you need them, but currently I'm faced with three concerns. The first is a man living on a prime piece of land who is refusing to sell. The second is my need for quality advertising. And the third is getting back some stolen design plans. What's the story with the holdout? There's a stretch of land which is of great interest to me in the area of Anastasia Avenue. Currently, the land is owned by an individual who has no interest in selling it. He's built himself a home there and understandably wants to keep it. Unfortunately, business is business and I need that land to complete a very important project. I need you to convince the gentleman to sell. What about your need for publicity? Any project, no matter how good it is, is doomed to fail if nobody knows about it. I've managed to secure some decent advertising, but I feel we need something more. The story of Coral Gables needs to make headlines. I'd like you to head over to the Miami Herald building and see if you can befriend a reporter or two. Having a journalist in our corner would do wonders for our advertising. What about your design plans? I regret to say that a set of design plans were stolen from my office a few weeks ago by a man claiming to want a job interview. In reality, he was a spy, sent from my competitor Orrin Riley's real estate company. Riley still has my plans, but two can play his game. Since you're a fresh face in town, I need you to infiltrate his company and take back the plans. I'll have my secretary set up an interview for you later today. And here, take this set of dummy plans and leave it in place of the real ones so Riley doesn't get suspicious. Infiltrate his company? What will that entail exactly? My guess is that Riley will have the plans stored away in his office someplace. You may need to do a bit of searching. Are you comfortable with that? I know it's asking for quite a bit. I think so, sir. I'll do as much as I can within legal means. Of course. I'm not asking you to commit any crimes. After all, you're just taking back something that was already stolen. Think of it as a repossession. I'll just get to it then. I wish you the best of luck, although you seem the type who makes his own luck. I have a feeling I can expect great things from you. Yes? May I help you? Good day to you, sir. My name is Alfred Banks, and whatever it is you're selling, I'm not interested. 
Ah, but I'm not here to sell you anything. In fact, quite the contrary. Oh, I see. Merrick sent you, didn't he? I... well, yes, he did. Look, you can go back and tell him exactly what I told all the others. Nothing doing. I bought this land before he got his little vision, and I intend to keep it. I tried appeasing him by building my house to match his Mediterranean style, but apparently even that wasn't good enough. I did everything by the book and filed all the proper paperwork. You tell Merrick he'll get me off this land when I'm no longer drawing breath. Good day to you, sir. Excuse me. What can I do for you? Could I look something up? Of course. What do you need? There's a house at 1251 Anastasia Avenue that I need some information on. Of course. Let me go have a look. Yes, here we are. Belongs to one Ernest Mathers. Built it himself six months ago. Might I have a copy of the document? What's your business with it? I'm working with Mr. George Merrick of the Coral Gables Project, and it's of utmost importance to his acquisition of the land. All right, you can take this copy. Thank you for your help. Anytime. Again, what do you want? Mr. Mathers, I've just been to the Hall of Records downtown and I pulled up a copy of your house record. Yes, and? It seems you had a property inspection done when you completed the house, but it was very basic. Furthermore, you didn't pull any construction permits. I didn't need to. I haven't done any exterior work. Nevertheless, I'm afraid I'll need to perform an inspection of your home just as a matter of record. On what authority? Look, you can either let me come in and do a brief home inspection, or I can report you to the county, and you can deal with whatever fine or punishment they see fit to dispense. Ah, uh, fine. Come in. I, I don't know what you expect to find, though. Uneven rafters are quite the hazard. This whole roof could come tumbling down on you. Haven't had any problems so far. Quite a nasty build-up of mold you have here. Uh, my wife told me she'd clean it up. This wall shows clear signs of water damage. You probably have a cracked pipe somewhere back there. Oh, I suppose that would explain it. These baseboards look like they were installed during the Roosevelt administration. No, no, they're supposed to look like that. It's the style, makes them seem classic. Your floor tiles are severely cracked here. Do you regularly have elephants as house guests? No. I mean, my mother-in-law hasn't seen the new house yet. That was a joke. I'm sure it was. What a mess! You clearly have a problem with a water leak. And I've called the plumber, but he's yet to get back to me. Your fireplace seems to be letting go of some of its tiles. Oh, yes. I've been meaning to fix those. Nice gazebo. I hope you know you need to have a permit to have one of those. It was a wedding gift from my sister. How was I meant to know? Ignorance of rules is no excuse, Mr. Mathers. You seem to have several problems in this home. Are you sure you performed a thorough inspection? W well, yes. Yeah, I I'm sure I did. I see. And who was it that performed this inspection exactly? Why, it was uh, a man. Yes, a man from the city. And did you happen to get this man's name? Well, no, I... Uh... 
I, I wasn't aware of... You didn't really have an inspection performed, did you? No. I paid someone to say they had done one on the public record. You won't tell anyone, will you? You're in quite a state here, Mr. Mathers. Not only did you build this house without the proper permits, but you also put fraudulent information on your report. This doesn't look good any way you cut it. Please, I, I have money. How much to get you to look the other way? I'm afraid my silence can't be bought, Mr. Mathers. However, you might be able to get yourself out of this jam if you sell your house and land to Mr. Merrick. So this is what it's come to. Well, I see how it is. You come in here, play in the White Knight, but you're no better than any of the rest of them. I did what I had to do to keep my land, but I suppose that was all for naught. Fine. I'll call up Mr. Merrick and tell him he's won. I hope you can live with yourself, you snake. I'm sure I'll manage. Have a nice afternoon, sir. Quite an operation they've got going on in here. Hello, sir. Let me know if I can help you with anything. May I have a moment? You may. I'm Alfred Banks, and I believe you have the advantage. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Pleasure. What is it you do around here, Miss Douglas? I write articles, conduct interviews, and investigate stories. I'm what's commonly referred to in this business as a reporter. I suppose that was a bit of a silly question on my part. Well, at least you can admit to it. That puts you ahead of most. Have you reported anything on George Merrick's Coral Gables project? Don't know that I'd have to. He spent a small fortune on advertising. I doubt there's a single person in town who hasn't heard of it by now. That may not exactly be the case. Mr. Merrick asked me to come here and inquire about possibly getting someone to do a bit of publicity for him. Ah, suddenly it all becomes clear. Let's get something straight right now. I'm not some dumb Dora at anyone's beck and call. If Merrick wants a reporter in his pocket, it'll have to be someone else. I'm far too busy to find myself on the leash of some land developer and his cronies. Now, now, let's not be so hasty. I'm sure Mr. Merrick isn't looking for a lapdog. Just someone who can provide some help. Maybe we can reach some sort of agreement. Now that you mention it, maybe we can. Okay, I'll help you out if you do me a favor first. Name it. There's a story I've been following, but I've hit a bit of a roadblock. Are you familiar with Jeremiah Miller? Uh, afraid not. Who is he? He's a local politician. County commissioner, in fact. Very outspoken on the subject of prohibition. I have reason to believe, however, that he's full of hot air. Unfortunately, I've never been able to get close enough to him to see if my hunch is right. So, where do I come in? Miller enjoys spending his time at the Miami Men's Club on Brickell Avenue. I figure if he's going to indulge in any illicit pastimes, that would be his ideal spot. As I am of the fairer sex and therefore not allowed inside, I need someone I can trust to get in there and see if I'm right. And you trust me? Not particularly, but you're my best hope and you need my help. So I figured you've got the best chance of actually getting this done. So, if I catch Miller in the act, what then? Bring me some sort of proof of his hypocrisy, be it a photograph or a signed confession. I'm not fussy. I'll see what I can do. Do you enjoy your work here? I do, although to be completely frank, it's gotten a bit tedious. Granted, what I'm doing now is much better than what I did when I started, that being the society column. Back then, things were so slow I made up half my stories. It certainly seems like there's a lot going on in town these days. I won't argue with you on that point, but we'll see what the future brings. Maybe I'll take a crack at going out on my own. We've managed to get the vote. I see no reason why a woman can't make a name for herself as a freelance writer. Anything you can tell me about Miami? When I first got here, this was no more than a glorified railroad terminal. There were less than 5,000 people and the streets were made of white dust. Now we've got hundreds, if not thousands, of new faces showing up every day and are constantly expanding. I bet it won't be long before some other fool tries draining the Everglades to make more room. I'll see you around. Count on it. Begging your pardon, my good man. Yes. This seems a rather exclusive establishment. Yes, sir, it is. Did you need something in particular, or did you prefer to stand around all day discussing the obvious? 
let's say, hypothetically speaking, that someone wanted to join your club. How would one go about doing so? It's a rather simple three-step process. One, you have to be a man. I believe you've already met that requirement. Two, you must prove your pedigree. We don't just allow anyone in off the street. Finally, you need to have a respected member of the community vouch for you. Once you've done that, it's a simple matter of waiting to be contacted for approval. I didn't catch your name. That's because I didn't pitch it. You can call me Morris if you need anything. Of course, how much I'll actually be able to serve you remains to be seen. Morris? Any relation to Evan Morris from New York? I don't think so, no. Oh, well, I guess that helps my chances of getting into this club, at least. Are you familiar with a gentleman by the name of Jeremiah Miller? I'm not at liberty to say. Come on, I know for a fact that he's a member of this club. Then why did you ask me? Because I want to know what you know about him. As I said, I'm not at liberty to discuss members of this club with non-members. I'm sure you understand. I'm afraid I must be going. Good day to you, sir. Take a look at this photo. Notice anything in particular? It looks like you, with a mustache. If I may be frank, I'm glad you shaved it off. It doesn't really suit you. That's my father. Hiram Banks. He was one of the top real estate moguls in the Northeast. Surely that demonstrates I have some sort of pedigree. Ah, of course. While I have to admit I've never heard of the man, we have several members who surely have being in that field. Very good. The club will take this into consideration when evaluating your membership application. Come in. Hello, Mr. Merrick. Thanks. A pleasure to see you. Please, have a seat. I was wondering if I could ask a favor of you. What might that be? I'm trying to join the Miami Men's Club, and I need someone to vouch for me. A society climber on your first day in town? It's not quite like that. I understand. Sometimes this business makes us do things we weren't expecting. You're telling me. Very well. Give me one moment and I'll have Miss Rogers type up a letter for you. She's having it up for you right now. Thank you, Mr. Merrick. My pleasure. I'll just get to it then. I wish you the best of luck. Here you are, Mr. Banks. Thank you very much, Ms. Rogers. Have a look at this. It's a letter from George Merrick sponsoring my entry into your club. Merrick, eh? Well, he is a fairly prestigious member of the community. Very good. The club will take this into consideration when evaluating your membership application. Well, you seem to have provided sufficient information to be considered for membership into this club. Now it's just a matter of your evaluation. How long will that take? Oh, it all depends. Likely a week or two. We'll contact you when the decision has been made. I'm not sure I can wait that long. In that case, there may be ways of expediting the process. Say, friend, you've really been a great help today. I'd like to give you a little something for your trouble. Why, thank you, Mr. Banks. Ah, well, what do you know? It seems the results of your evaluation are in, and you've passed with flying colors. 
welcome to the Miami Men's Club. Please feel free to use any of the club's amenities at your leisure. And of course, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. May I take your hat, sir? Yes, of course. Much appreciated. Well, look at this, boys. It seems we've got a new member. Come on in, my boy. There's no need to be shy. What's your name, and where are you coming from? Alfred Banks, from New York. Just relocated to Miami this morning. I must say, you work fast, Banks. Just arrived, and already a member of one of the best men's clubs in town. You must really be the cat's pajamas. Well, I... But where are my manners? I'm Jeremiah Miller, County Commissioner, District 2. Pleasure. I welcome you not only to the club, but to our fair city as well. Thank you, sir. Feel free to make yourself at home and get to know the others. If you have any questions about the city or anything else, I'll be happy to help. Good book? Pardon me, sir, but... Mr. Miller? What can I help you with, Banks? So, you're a county commissioner? Indeed, I am. What does that entail exactly? Well, I won't bore you with the particulars, but basically I'm one of several elected officials who run the county. It's not a bad jumping point if you, like me, are interested in furthering your political career. Your best bet is to find a platform and rally up supporters. After that, climbing the ladder is duck soup. Oh, my game is real estate, not politics. You mean there's a difference? <laughs> We're both out to screw the next chump over. <laughs> Why, our fields are practically brothers. Isn't that a bit cynical, sir? Oh, it's a necessary quality in this business, my friend. Now, don't dismiss my idea so easily, Banks. You've got the makings of a politician in you. I wouldn't be surprised to see you in office somewhere within the next few years. I've heard you've got a particularly strong stance on the subject of prohibition. You heard correctly, Banks. I have a strict no-tolerance policy. Oh, don't get me wrong. What a man does in his home is his business. But people going out on the town and getting smoked, it's unacceptable. Just a minute. Are you saying you're fine with a man drinking in his own home? Well... Come now, old sport. Don't be naive. Every man enjoys a little nip now and then. Prohibition is designed for the masses, not the individuals. Keep the drink at home, I say. If it's on the streets and in bars, that's where the problem lies, and that's where we have to enforce. Just look at this place. I've made sure we're as dry as a bone in here, and nobody is the worse for it. Have you lived here long? About 20 years, in fact. This city has grown considerably since then, and I'm proud to be involved in its government. Know anything about the other club members? They seem a bit cold. Nah, don't let them get to you. They're just a bit shy around new members. Soon enough, they'll warm up to you, and they'll be like your second family. In any case, the bookworm over there is Carlton Meeks. From what I understand, he's in the real estate game. The two gents over there are John Norris Sr. and Jr. Not a day goes by, they aren't in here having some sort of squabble. And finally, the esteemed gentleman leaning on the counter is Franklin Evans. Hmm. Don't think I've seen his face in years. He tends to keep to himself, you see. Well, they're not the liveliest bunch, but uh, they'll grow on you. Mr. Miller, this may be none of my business, but I was just trying to talk to the fellow over there by the counter, and, well, he's got a very strong scent of alcohol on him. I felt a bit woozy just standing next to him. You don't say. I suppose that would explain quite a bit. This won't do. No, sir, not at all. Excuse me a moment, won't you, Banks? Evans, are you drunk? Evans, answer me. Good. 
Lord, how much have you had? You're a hazard. What if I wanted to light a cigarette? You're a disgrace to the good name of this club. Your hat, sir. Thank you. Have a look at this. It's Jeremiah Miller's engraved flask. So my hunch was right after all. Nice work, Banks. It's a bit of a tenuous link, but it's probably the best we'll be able to do at this point. Well, a deal's a deal. You can go ahead and tell Merrick I'll write for him. I appreciate your help, Miss Douglas. Pardon me, miss. Hmm? What can I help you with, sir? I have an interview scheduled with Mr. Riley today. I see. And your name is? Alfred Banks. Just a minute. Uh, were you going to let him know I'm here? Huh? Oh, right. Hey, Mr. Riley, you got someone here to see you. I think I could have done that myself. Go ahead and go through the door there. Of course. Thank you. Pardon me, miss. Hmm? What can I help you with, sir? You seem very relaxed. Do I? Well, I'll have you know I'm anything but. Why, just this afternoon, I have an appointment with my pedicurist. Then first thing tomorrow morning, it's off to the day spa. And then I have to go to the hair salon. I get the point, miss. I really sympathize with your plight. Aw, oh, well, ain't you a sweetheart? I appreciate the help. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you, young man? Hello, Mr. Riley. My name is Alfred Banks, and I'm here for a job interview. Ah, uh, yes, of course. My secretary informed me you'd be coming in. I'm afraid I'm in a bit of a hurry today, however. I have a very important appointment I must depart for in about 15 minutes. Then I suppose we should get this over with as soon as possible. Yes, yes, of course. Well, let's begin. Why don't we start off by you telling me a bit about yourself? Well, you already know my name. I used to work at Morrison Banks up in New York, but recently moved here because of the land boom. I've got plenty of experience from working at my father's company. You don't say. What made you get into real estate? I wanted to follow in the footsteps of my father. Honoring the family business. I greatly respect that. In a way, I'm a bit envious. I don't have any sons, so my business will eventually go to someone else. But I still value family. It's really the most important part of my life. But listen to me babbling. Let's get back to the interview. Now, what do you think you can bring to this company? I'm very good at dealing with people. I have yet to meet a client I'm unable to convince. Well, Banks, I must say, you seem to be a very promising candidate. I'll have my secretary contact you in a few days. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must run. I have to meet my daughter for dinner, and I don't want to be late. A word of advice, Banks. As great as this business will make you feel, you are nobody if you haven't got someone who loves you. My daughter, for instance, means the world to me. I always want her to be around, which is why I've got these paintings of her in my office. <laughs> but I digress. Let me show you back out. Good day to you, Banks. Caroline, hold my calls. Pardon me, miss. Hmm? What can I help you with, sir? I'm afraid I need to get back into Mr. Riley's office. Oh? Why is that? I left something behind in there during my interview. No, oh, I see. Go ahead and get it. I never lock the door when Mr. Riley is out anyway. Oh. Well, thank you. I appreciate the help. Mm-hmm.
Come in. Hello, Mr. Merrick. Thanks. A pleasure to see you. Please, have a seat. Here you are, Mr. Merrick. I got your design plans back from Riley. Very impressive work, Banks. Did you get the job, too? I'm not quite sure about that, sir. <laughs> well, for the time being, let's hope you didn't. I don't want Riley stealing anything else from me. I'll just get to it, then. I wish you the best of luck. I believe that's everything taken care of, Mr. Merrick. You know, when you first walked through that door, I had a feeling there was something special about you. I'm glad to see my assumptions were well placed. Welcome aboard the Golden Galleon, Banks. I think you're going to do wonders for us. The Golden Galleon, sir? Yes, it's our new slogan. Dammers came up with it. Follow the Golden Galleon to Coral Gables, where your castles in Spain are made real. It certainly has a ring to it. That it does. Now then, there's no time to waste. I've got some big plans for the next few years, and I'm going to need all the help I can get. How are those sales going, Banks? Not bad, Doc. Just made another 12 this hour. I knew there was something special about you the minute you stepped off that train, kid. Say, Doc, this new office is great and all, but aren't we a bit crowded in this room? You'll get used to it, kiddo. It's just that in New York, I wasn't... Well, this isn't New York, as I'm sure you've noticed by now. Anyway, George wants to see you in his office ASAP. I see. Thanks for letting me know. Could I bother you a moment, Miss Rogers? No bother, Mr. Banks. What can I do for you? So, how are you liking your new job? Oh, it's wonderful. I finally feel useful around here. To be fair, being Merrick's secretary wasn't exactly a useless position. True, but I think I can bring a lot more to this company doing promotional art rather than just taking calls. The Coral Gables project seems to be going pretty well, wouldn't you say? It sure does. If this office is any indication, we'll be doing extremely well in the next few years. Have you happened to hear anything about what's next? I think Mr. Merrick is still concentrating on getting lots sold. After that, who knows? Although I did overhear someone saying something about a pool. No idea what they meant by it, though. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Got a moment, Wilson? Of course, Banks. What can I do for you? What's that you're working on? Oh, I'm just getting a few reports transcribed for Mr. Merrick. Reports? Yeah, you know, the reports you all have to do after making a sale or interviewing a potential client. The ones you're required to do. Oh, sure, those, of course. Things around here seem to be shaping up pretty nicely, wouldn't you say? They certainly seem to be, Banks. They certainly seem to be. See you around. Hey, Doc. Howdy, Banks. Everything going well for the development? Not well, no. Things are going gangbusters. We're expanding every day and getting ever closer to the big project. Big project? Oh, don't you worry. That will be revealed very soon. How are things going for you? Not bad, not bad. Although, being cooped up in this office is starting to get to me. I'm itching to get back out into the field again. Oh, which reminds me, are you doing anything later today? I could use your help with something. I should have a little time available. What sort of help did you have in mind? I'm going to be conducting a demonstration for some prospective buyers, and I need a volunteer. But in order to keep things under control, I can't just pick any old egg. I need a plant. So you want me to be your volunteer? If you'd be so kind. I'll have my cart set up in a field near the corner of Granada and Bird. Drop by this afternoon and I'll give you more details. Better hit the bricks. Right-o. Alfie, good to see you. Please come in. How do you like the new office? It's a bit crowded, but much nicer looking than the one downtown. The success of Coral Gables isn't going to be about money or sales. It's about aesthetics. Well, you've certainly gone above and beyond in that department, sir. There's no need to be so formal. We're all a big family here. Please call me George. Fair enough. What was it you wanted to see me about, George? Ah, yes, of course. 
I'm giving you a very special assignment. We've been doing fantastic with sales thus far, but I've decided to try a new approach. I'm calling the project State Days. Each week, we'll bring down a group of people by bus from a different state. But it won't just be enough to show them around. We need something more, a spectacle. What kind of spectacle? Ah, this is where you come in. I want you to ask around, see if you can find some sort of performer or show that will impress the crowds. I really wouldn't know where to begin. You're a resourceful young fellow. I'm sure you'll find something. Which reminds me. Here you are. The keys to your own company car. It should make getting around town much easier. No fooling? My own car? It's cheaper for us to have you drive yourself around rather than pay for taxi rides. You can drive, can't you? Well, I admit it's been a while. Just take care not to run into any ditches and you should be fine. Oh, and also, this telegram arrived for you this morning. I was going to send it along with my secretary, but you got here first. Now get to it. I've got a group from New York coming in two days and I want some entertainment for them. I'm on it. George? Yes, Alfie? How is everything coming along? Wonderfully. Thank you for asking. Clearly, you can see progress by way of the new office, but we're also expanding to larger projects. I've got my head architect designing a luxury pool, and our largest project is in the initial phase. What exactly is this mysterious project I keep hearing about? It'll be announced soon. I just need to iron out some details, but it will be worth the wait, I can assure you. I'm having a bit of trouble thinking of a suitable spectacle for you. Put yourself in the shoes of the tourists. Remember that what we're selling here is not land. It isn't just a piece of ground on which to put a house. What we are really selling is romance. The stars and the moon, the tropics, the wind off the blue waters, and the perfume of flowers that never grew in northern climes. You need to find something that will excite them even more than that. That's all for now. So what's this all about? The future, my boy, the future! And what will I be doing exactly? You're going to be my plant in the crowd, but there's one last thing I need before we're ready to go. What's that? I seem to have misplaced my model streetcar, or maybe I left it back at the sales office. Could you go have a look while I finish setting up? I'm on it. Got a moment, Wilson? Of course, Banks. What can I do for you? Say, you've been around all morning. Did you happen to notice a model streetcar on Doc's desk? Oh, um... Is something wrong? Banks, you have to promise me you won't say anything. All right, mum's the word. What's the problem? When Doc left earlier, I noticed the model streetcar on his desk. I went to get it so I could go after him and let him know he left it behind. But I accidentally knocked it on the floor and, well, the little antenna it had on it broke off. I feel terrible about it, but there's nothing I can do. Oh, is that all? Don't worry about it. Let me have the model and I'll see about fixing it. And don't worry, Doc will be none the wiser. Ah, thank you, Banks. I owe you one. See you around.
Here you go, Doc. One model streetcar ready to roll. Thanks, Alvy. Sometimes I think I'd forget my own head if it weren't bolted on. Now come back in about a half an hour and join the crowd. When I ask for a volunteer, you get up here before any of the others get a chance. Then just follow my lead and we'll knock everyone's socks off. Sounds easy enough. See you in a bit. And in order to show off the amazing future of Coral Gables, I'll need a volunteer from the crowd. Who would like to assist me? I'll do it. Fantastic. Now, young man who I can assure everyone I have never seen before today, what is your name? Uh, it's Alfie Banks, sir. Well, Alfie, you look like a man with taste. A man who wouldn't think twice about moving into a luxury area like Coral Gables. And believe me, if you think it's something now, just wait until you see what the future holds. Come closer and let everyone in the crowd get a look. Now then, if you'd be so kind as to take this alligator clip and attach it to the positive terminal on that battery there. Fantastic. Now just wait one second while I get the model. And here we go. Gentlemen, behold the future of Coral Gables. The streetcar! What the... Ah! Doc, are you alright? Well, that certainly went off with a bang, didn't it? Show's over, folks. You can see yourselves out. I don't understand what happened. Seems the antenna on the model car touched the charged up pole and went kablooey. But why would it do that? Probably because some joker swapped the plastic antenna for this metal one with a wire. Oh, uh, I thought the model was battery powered. No, it's a wind-up. The battery was just to impress the crowd. But it hardly matters. I set out to wow them, and that's exactly what I did. I mean, it could have gone better, but you did what you could. You can go ahead and get back to what you were doing before. You're... welcome? Would you be opposed to me taking your sign, Doc? Take it. I'm sick of the sight of it. There he is! Beauregard, how nice to see you. Oh, why so formal, Alfred? Aren't you glad to see your brother? Of course, I just wish I'd had a bit more of a warning is all. Oh, come on. Who needs warnings with family? Anyway, let's have a seat. I was about to chew my own arm off waiting for you. So, tell me what you've been up to. I've been doing fairly well, to be honest. I managed to get hired by George Merrick my first day down here. Well, ain't that just the berries? That your heap out there? Yes, I was given a company car this morning. Hate to imagine what company it's been keeping. What's that supposed to mean? I just figured a high-profile guy like Merrick could afford something nicer, is all. I'm working on an assignment at the moment. Oh yeah? What? I've been put in charge of finding a spectacle to sell lots to people coming in from out of town. No kidding. Sounds like fun. It's not fun, it's work. So? Who's to say work can't be fun? You've never worked a day in your life, Bo. How would you know? Are you going to start with that baloney again? Fair point. Anyhow, I have yet to find anything suitable. Well, if it helps. I overheard that guy over there talking about how his wife was a wing walker or something. Might be something worth looking into. You know, it just might. Thank you, Bo. Why don't you tell me what you've been up to? Not too much, really. I've kind of been in a rut, to tell the truth. I feel like I could use a change. Why don't you go to work for the company? Morris is still peeved at what happened with you. He hasn't been very... receptive. Oh. Look, about that. You don't have to explain yourself, Alfie. I know you couldn't possibly have done what he says you did. Whatever really happened, you're better off having left that place. 
Thank you, Bo. I appreciate your support. It's been great catching up with you, Bo, but I really should get going. How long are you planning on being in town for? Well, actually, I was considering moving down here, too. Really? You're gonna leave Mother alone? She'll be fine. She's got plenty of friends in the neighborhood. Besides, it's gotten to the point where I'm feeling like more of a burden than a help. And she's actually letting little baby Bo come down here on his own? Knock it off, will ya? She doesn't mind it so much knowing you're here. Anyway, I'll be here if you get any more time off today. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Pardon the interruption, folks. Huh? Oh, what can I do for you? Pleasure to meet you, sir. And madam, my name is Alfred Banks, but please call me Alfie. How do you do, Alfie? The name's Richard Burns, but everyone calls me Curly. Over there's my wife, Mabel Cody. Pleasure's all mine, Mr. Banks. Are you folks from down here originally? Nah, we're just traveling around with our act. Your act? Sure, ain't you heard of Mabel Cody's Flying Circus? I'm afraid I haven't. Please, tell me about it. Why, it's the most exciting and daring show you'll see all year. We got a biplane which flies unbelievably low to the ground, and Mabel walks across the wings. We've been touring all across the state, impressing crowds in the hundreds. Sounds exciting. Are you for hire? Always. Who's interested? Have you ever heard of George Merrick? The guy who's developing this area? Sure. Well, he's in need of a spectacle to entertain crowds he's planning on bringing in from out of state. I think your flying circus would fit the bill perfectly. Sounds good. But don't forget about our little issues, Curly. Ah, of course. Is there a problem? A couple, actually. <laughs> but really, they're more minor setbacks than problems. Our pilot just quit to get married, so we haven't got anyone to fly our plane. Then there's the plane itself, which got a bit damaged during the last show. And of course, the small issue of requiring payment in advance. But we can still talk business. <laughs> These are just minor setbacks that can be easily resolved, I'm sure. You say you haven't got a pilot? Well, at the moment, no. Like I said, our guy quit last week. I heard there's a pretty good pilot in town, but we haven't been able to get a hold of him. Oh, yeah, the Flynn or something like that. If we could get him on board, that would be just ducky. What's wrong with your plane? Nothing too serious. It's being worked on right now. The mechanic said it should be ready by next week. I don't know if Mr. Merrick wants to wait that long. Where's the plane now? Maybe I can see about speeding up the process. It's over at the airfield near Granada Boulevard. About your payment. Of course, of course. Our fee is $50 up front. That gets you a full show which lasts 30 minutes. I'm afraid I haven't got that kind of money on me. I'll have to ask Mr. Merrick about it. Sure, sure, not a problem. Just let us know when you've got the dough. I appreciate your time. No sweat, pal. Hey, Bo. Alfie, what's going on? This is a quaint little place. I've never been here myself. It is, isn't it? Kind of reminds me of the one back home we used to go to. I can see it, sure. But all these diners tend to look the same after a while. There's something about this one. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels special somehow. Why don't you get a job here? I just might, actually. Really? I was just pulling your leg. You're telling me you actually want to work? Is it that hard to believe? To be perfectly frank, yes. What's made you change your mind? Leaving the city, coming down here. I guess it's just made me realize I need to be independent. How's... how's Mother doing? She's okay. Coping. Like I said, she's got friends who keep her company. It's been nearly ten years since Father died. She needs to move on. Tell me something I don't know. In a way, I think my moving down here will do her some good. She'll realize she has a life to live on her own. I certainly hope so. Has New York changed much? You've been gone less than four months. How much could it have possibly changed? You'd be surprised, Bo. Although, to tell the truth, I get the feeling this city will be almost unrecognizable in a few years. Just the way of the world, I suppose. You really give me the heebie-jeebies when you get all philosophical like that, Alfie. Hey, Bo. How'd you like to go for a drive? Really? Where to? 
Want to come mingle at the men's club? I'm not really in the mood to listen to a bunch of old men tell stories. Maybe we could go someplace else? Come with me to the sales office? You can see where I work. If it's all the same, I'd rather not. I'll probably just get in the way. On second thought, I'm too busy to go on a ride right now. Aw, okay. Let me know if you change your mind. Begging your pardon. Yeah, what is it? I feel this may be a silly question on my part, but are you a pilot? Guilty as charged. Zachariah Flynn's the name, but everybody in the know calls me Flyboy. In the know? Sure. Anyone with half a brain's heard of my heroic deeds during the war. I suppose my brain must not be intact, because I've never heard of you. Well then, allow me to enlighten you. During my first campaign, I was in a total of 57 dogfights, and I won every single one of them. I racked up 200 enemy kills and earned 17 medals of valor. Then I started my second campaign in 1915, where I... So that's basically a summary of my accomplishments. Hmm? Oh, yes. Fascinating. I have a business proposal for you. Oh, yeah? I'm in need of a pilot for an air show that's being put together. Would you be interested? Hmm, that all depends. What's it pay? That's a detail we can negotiate later on. And what exactly happens in the air show? You fly the plane, and Mabel Cody does wing walking and other stunts. Mabel Cody, eh? Yes, of Mabel Cody's Flying Circus. They've been touring all over Florida. Sounds interesting, but I have one last question. Why on earth would a pilot of my skill and fame want to work for some podunk air show? Because it's being sponsored by George Merrick and his Coral Gables project. Surely you've heard of that. Of course, can't throw a rock in this town without seeing ads for it. He seems to be getting lots of people interested. He is? Just think of what all those people will say when they see you in the show. Hmm. Okay, I'll be your pilot, but on one condition. What's your condition? I want to be the star attraction of your show. You'll have posters, right? I would assume so, yes. Right. I want them to make me out as the star. I see. Any other requirements? Well, now that you mention it, I think the name should have a real ring to it, written so it rolls off the tongue. Also, I think the colors should really pop, like the kind that go well with each other, you know? And finally, I think these posters should be huge. I want to be able to see one from the air. I'll see what I can do. Are you a new member here? I've never seen you around. No, I've just been away for a while. I don't know if you've heard, but there was this little thing called the Great War. Sure, but that was four years ago. I had other things to do before visiting this fair city again. When you get to be as famous as me, there's a lot of demand for your presence. I'll see you later. Take care, Mac. Could I bother you a moment, Miss Rogers? No bother, Mr. Banks. What can I do for you? Ms. Rogers, I'm on a special assignment for Mr. Merrick, and I need to design a poster. Sure. What will you be needing? But I need a few specific design elements. Just tell me what you need, and I'll prepare a mock-up for you. What are you going to want to put on it for the name? I think... Flyboy Flynn's Fantastic Flying Circus will be good. That's a mouthful, but it does have a nice ring to it. So what color scheme are you going to want? Orange and blue. Okay, and how big are we going to print these? Big. The biggest we can get. Around 37 by 60. You aren't fooling around. 
Right. Give me about 20 minutes and I'll have a mock-up designed for you. There you are. Thank you. Begging your pardon. Yeah, what is it? I've had this poster made up for the air show. What do you think? Let me see that. Nice name, I like that. Nice colors, exactly what I was thinking. And what's this little number on the side here? That's how big the final print size will be. Of course, that's perfect. Well, this is just the bee's knees. People are gonna love this show. I'm glad you approve. Does this mean I can count on you as the pilot? Sure, just let me know where and when and I'll be there. There, my good man. Yes, sir. Curly and Mabel sent me to check up on things. How long before this beauty is up in the sky again? Shouldn't be more than a week. I'm kind of stuck waiting right now. There isn't much else I can do at the moment. What is it you're waiting on? I have two parts on their way. One's a piece for the rudder, and the other's a magneto for the engine. What about this magneto you mentioned? The magneto for the ignition is damaged, and I'm waiting on a replacement to come in. What sort of engine is it? Uh, Curtis OX-5. Fairly common engine in these types of planes. Some boats, too. Unreliable piece of junk, really. But they mostly get the job done. Any idea where I'd be able to get one? Order from the manufacturer, like I did. Aside from that, any place where there's lots of planes or boats would have them in spades. Hmm. I think that gives me an idea. By the way, where is the magneto usually found on the engine? Right at the bottom in front. Can't miss it. How badly is the rudder damaged? See for yourself. Looks like something took a bite out of it. So what are you waiting on to fix it? A new rudder top. Should be here in a few days. Is there anything that might be used as a substitute? Any decent sized wooden plank would do in a pinch, sure. You look awfully young to be an airplane mechanic. How long have you been doing this for? Six months, next week. But I've been working on planes since I was a kid. My father was an airplane mechanic during the war, see? So he taught me everything he knew. I'll let you get on with it. See ya. Think you might make use of this piece of wood? Mm hmm Now let me see. I think I can, yeah. If I shave off a bit of the side here... It'll work as a replacement for the missing chunk of rudder. Hey, thanks, mister. You really saved me some time here. Happy to help. Would you mind terribly if I borrowed one of your wrenches? Not as long as you bring it back, I don't. I can't say I blame you for wanting to borrow it. That clunker looks like it needs to be serviced pretty soon. Welcome to the Dinner Key Marina, sir. Please let me know if I can be of any assistance. Hello there. Fine day for it. What can I do for you? Don't you get uncomfortable standing out in this heat wearing dark clothing? Eh, uh, you get used to it after a while. And besides, there's a nice sea breeze that comes in every so often. Keeps things cool. I suppose there are worse places to be standing around. Yep, that there are. This marina doesn't seem to have many boats. Yes, well. 
Hasn't been a commercial marina very long. It was taken over for naval operations during the war. But we're steadily getting more people coming in. My guess is people will be fighting for space within the next year or so. That's certainly an interesting contraption at the end of the dock there, isn't it? What, the hydroplane? Yes, it's definitely something to look at. It's been docked there for quite a while now. I actually can't remember seeing who brought it in. Shame, really. I'd like to ask the owner about it. Really quite a fascinating piece of machinery. I'll just be on my way. Have a nice day, sir. Hey now, don't be fooling around with that. Hey, Bo. Alfie! What's going on? Hey, Bo. How'd you like to go for a drive? Really? Where to? How about Dinner Key Marina? You can look at the boats in the ocean. Sounds like the bee's knees. Let's go. Bo, come over here. What is it? I need you to do me a favor and chat up the security guard. Tell him you own that hydroplane over there. What? Why? Just trust me. Oh, and if he starts asking you questions about it, just make something up. I get the feeling he isn't exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. Um, okay, if you say so. Come on, Bo. Let's head back. That was fun. I'm glad we made it back in one piece. Thanks for the ride, Alfie. Is this the sort of magneto you need for the engine? It sure is. How were you able to get one so quickly? I have my ways. Well, you really saved me some time. I'll get to work replacing this right away. Fantastic. Here's your wrench back, by the way. Thanks. Hey, you've really helped me out with getting this plane fixed. It should be ready by tomorrow. George? Yes, Alfie? I think there might be something wrong with the car you gave me. Oh? Has it given you any trouble? It just sort of makes this clunking noise sometimes. Hmm. I was told it was in perfectly acceptable working order. Oh well. As long as it gets you around, you'll be alright. I think I may have found your spectacle. Wonderful. What is it? Mabel Cody's Flying Circus. She's a wing walker. Does all kinds of stunts, apparently. Sounds like a terrific find. Well done. There's just one thing. 
She and her husband require payment in advance. I see. How much? 50 for a 30-minute show. Reasonable enough, I suppose. You'll have to take the money out of our business account. Just head over to the Bank of Coral Gables and tell them I sent you to withdraw the money. That's all for now. Welcome to the Bank of Coral Gables. How may I help you, sir? I need to withdraw some money. Thank you for banking with us, sir. Have a pleasant day. I'll try my best. Everyone with their hands up! This is a robbery! I said put your hands up! Now, just a minute. There's really no need for this. Shut up, Mac. Nobody asked you to talk. Just, just put your hands up and hand over the dough. Now, if you'll just listen for a moment. Well, what are you playing at, bucko? I ain't got time to chat. Just hand over your dough before the boys in blue get here, will ya? What do you think this is, playtime? You just come in here, waving a gun around, demanding everyone put their hands up? Have you even done this before? I... No, as a matter of fact, I, I haven't. But, but this ain't about my personal life. This is about you handing over your money. Is this really what you want to be doing with your life? Robbing banks? Surely things can't be so bad that you have to turn to a life of crime. What do you know, huh? You got no idea about my life. Times ain't so glamorous for everyone you know. Just cause you get the parade around in fancy suits doesn't mean it's the same for everyone else. Now quit trying to distract me and just hand over your cash. You talk tough, but I bet you've never even fired a gun before. You, you shut up, you hear me? I don't gotta take this from you. I've shot plenty of guys. You don't even compare to half of them. Okay, okay, enough talking. So, what's it gonna be? Okay, okay, fine. I don't know what I was thinking coming in here, but there's gotta be another way. I'll leave you alone, but promise me you won't call the cops, okay? Not bad, Banks. I'm impressed. Finally, a newsworthy story. Real estate agent foils bank robbery. I may or may not include a pun on your last name. I haven't quite decided that yet. I'm just glad nobody got hurt. How are things going on the Gables project anyway? Not bad. In fact, you might want to come to the Granada Airfield in a few days to see for yourself. Sounds like a plan. See you there, Banks. Here you go. I believe this takes care of your payment. Certainly does. Much appreciated. This is it. Are you ready? I think so, Flyboy. Are you kidding? I was born ready. Only thing is, we can't seem to find Dave. Who? The fellow who drives me over to the plane so I can climb on it. Why to turn out today, Banks? Seems Merrick has got a lot riding on this little show. Feeling nervous? Nervous? Me? Of course not. 
Oh, by the way, Miss Cody, I ran into someone named Dave on my way over and he said to tell you he wasn't feeling well. At least, I think that's what he said. He was a bit hard to understand, to be honest. <sighs> he probably got in the curly secret stash of corn whiskey again. Well, looks like we're gonna need another driver if we aim to get this stunt performed today. I'll drive the car. You sure? You ain't practiced with us before. How hard could it possibly be? Don't worry, Banks. With a pilot of my skill, this will be like shooting fish in a barrel. It will be, assuming you ain't one of those all hat and no cattle types. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean, but I'm sure this will all go down without a hitch. All right, let's get this done. We've got a crowd to impress. Okay, Banks, it's as simple as cow pie. All you gotta do is keep her steady and let Curly know when to lower the top. That'll signal Flyboy. When the plane comes, keep her at the right speed and position so I can climb up on it. Up a heck of a lot of dust. Is that gonna be a problem? Nah, makes things more exciting, like a cattle stampede. Oh no, she's lost her grip. Thanks, do something. I can't hold on much longer. She won't be able to climb up the ladder if she doesn't regain her footing! Mabel, step on the car roof so you can get your footing back. Yee-haw! That did her! Thanks, Alfie! So, they finally gave me my own sales team after I practically had to beg them for it. No kidding. I'm glad to hear they've finally come around. You get your own office, too? No, not yet. Ah, well, things will work themselves out. I mean, it's only been, what, three years? Four, actually. <laughs> well, you can't expect to become an overnight success, especially not with such a risky project. Have they at least given you a nicer car? No, I'm still driving that old green heap around. Ah, I see. Well, business talk aside, how's your brother doing? Good, as far as I know. I haven't really spoken to him in a couple of months. Last I heard, he was going back to visit our mother. Wouldn't surprise me if he was asking to borrow some money. But then that's Bo for you. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth and spoiled rotten ever since. Anyway, Meeks, it was a pleasure catching up, but I really should be going. Have a good one, Banks. Mr. Banks, a message came for you from Mr. Merrick. He said to meet him at his mother's home as soon as possible. Thank you, Morris. It's been a while since I've been here. I wonder why George invited me. Hello, Alfie. Glad you could make it. Thanks for having me. It's great seeing you all, although... I have to confess, I'm a bit confused as to why I'm here. I'm glad to see he's managed to stay modest. It is one of his better qualities, Mother. I just wanted to say that over the past few years, you've been extremely valuable to us. Not only have you helped immensely with establishing Coral Gables, you've also managed to climb the ranks in the office in a relatively short amount of time. Oh, George, stop beating around the bush, would you? He knows what he's accomplished. What he's trying to say, Alfie, is that you're a man who can get things done. And as it happens, we need you for something very important. Yes. Thank you, Eunice. My dear wife, always to the point. In any case, we're getting close to incorporating Coral Gables as a city, and that requires a special team. A team I want you to be a part of. I'm honored, sir. As I'm sure you've heard, we're only a day away from launching our electric streetcar line. We'll be having a ceremony to commemorate the launch. But we'll also be making a very important announcement. The new mayor of Coral Gables. M mayor? Yes, every new city needs a mayor. Since we're not a very big city, we have the luxury of foregoing elections and having the first one appointed. I think announcing the mayor along with the streetcars will bring heaps of publicity. Wouldn't you say so, Miss Douglas? I've already got most of the article written. Just need to punch it up a bit with the details. 
Why not bring in someone well-known to make a speech at the ceremony? That would certainly make an impression. I thought you might suggest something like that, Banks. Did you have anyone in mind? Not for certain, but I'm sure I can find someone in town. I might be able to help you there, Alfie. Well then, I look forward to seeing what you accomplish. Good afternoon, Eunice. Good afternoon, Alfie. What's on your mind? How have you been? It's been a while since I last saw you. It really has been too long, Alfie. But I've been well, thank you. Mostly busy with the PTA at the school George built a couple of years ago. We should have these little gatherings more often. You know you're always welcome here. You're his wife. Surely George has let something slip about who's going to be mayor. Oh, Alfie, you know how George is about secrecy. Even if he had told me, I couldn't say. Especially considering he's standing right over there. Hello. You'll find out along with the rest of us. Any insights on places I might be able to find someone well-known to speak at tomorrow's event? I haven't really been out much lately, but I've heard that the Venetian pool is drawing quite the crowd. It's a beautiful day. Why not go there and get some sun? You might meet someone interesting, too. I just might do that. Thanks. I'll speak to you later. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Merrick. Hello, dear. How have you been feeling? Just fine, thank you. I'm content to stay in and watch everything going on around. I'm impressed by all the changes myself. I can't imagine what it must be like for someone who's lived here for so long. I'm curious to know what this place will look like in five years. I hope to be around to see it. Oh, I'm sure you will. You must be proud of your son. Extremely. George always did have ambitions, but to see him succeed... From what George has told me, I'm sure your parents are proud of you, too. I... yes, I think they are. Would you happen to have an idea of where I might be able to find some well-known people in the community to speak at tomorrow's event? Hmm... well, I don't get out too much these days. But I've heard that some notable people have been playing at the Biltmore Golf Course. Great. I'll swing by. Uh, no pun intended. Nice talking with you. Always a pleasure, my dear. Alfred Banks, first mayor of Coral Gables. If only you could see me now, father. Begging your pardon. Hmm? What is it, boy? I'm sorry to bother you, but you look incredibly familiar. Have we met? Depends. You're not a politician, are you? No. Didn't think so. You look too clean. I'm William Jennings Bryan. You may have heard of me if you've read a newspaper in the last 30 years. Of course. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Bryan. My name's Alfie Banks. I work with George Merrick on the Coral Gables Development Project. I'm sure that's very exciting work, young man. You tell Mr. Merrick that this pool of his is quite enjoyable. If I'm not mistaken, you're quite the advocate of prohibition, aren't you? You bet your buttons I am. These freewheeling wets must be going through a tough time not having been able to drink in all these years. I was having a conversation with one just last week. He was complaining about limiting freedoms by not allowing the enjoyment of alcohol. Do you know what I said to him? I said, well, if you need it so much, why don't you just call up your pal, Charles Darwin, and have him evolve you an extra hand to slap yourself in the face? Ha! You should have seen the look on him. I love throwing their ridiculous rhetoric back in their faces. Could I be bold enough to ask you for a huge favor? I'd say that is fairly bold, seeing as we've just met, but boldness is a quality I admire. Ask away. The thing is, Mr. Merrick is having a ceremony tomorrow to unveil the new line of streetcars, and I think it would be an asset to have someone as famous as you there to give a speech. Not interested. Streetcars are just the cousins of railroads. I don't quite follow. Now is not the time for a debate, son. Suffice it to say that the corporations running the streetcars don't represent the interests of the common man. And I very much care about the interests of the common man. So you'll understand if I politely decline your proposal. Mr. Bryan, 
If you would just listen a moment, I think I can show you that speaking at the event won't be such a terrible thing. Well, the least I can do is offer you the courtesy of my ears. Have at it, boy. Right. You think I should speak at this rally sponsored by the Streetcar Corporation. I eagerly await your reasoning. My boss, Mr. Merrick, he cares about the people. You ought to hear him talk. He doesn't care about profits. He just wants to build a community people can enjoy. Is that so? Well, he sounds like a man I could respect. I have to admit, what I've seen so far of his project has been inspiring. That he's doing it for the sake of the people is even more so. Not to be rude, but what exactly is the point of this rally, if I might ask? We're trying to let the community know what the Gables has to offer. It's merely to benefit those who don't know about it and may be interested in moving there. Sounds noble enough. I can support that motivation. I'm sure you understand my caution at lending my support. What sort of image is Merrick trying to go for? He's focusing on aesthetics. Coral Gables is the city beautiful. Hmm, the city beautiful. I do like the sound of that. I'd say it's fairly admirable to be concerned with how your city looks. You don't find that ideal in many real estate types these days. Listen, Mr. Bryan, I'm not going to take up much more of your day. I just want you to consider my offer one last time. Your presence at the rally will ensure that the people leave with the proper ideals and finely tuned moral compasses. Hmm. Well, when you put it that way, it does make the prospect sound considerably more appealing. So what do you say? All right, you convinced me. You let Mr. Merrick know I'll speak at that rally. Just tell me where and when I need to be there. I'll be sure to pass along the message. George, I've managed to recruit William Jennings Bryan for the rally tomorrow. You don't say. That's fantastic. Excellent work, Alfie. This will be a great boon to publicity. Make sure you're there bright and early tomorrow. I want you standing next to me when we make the announcements. You've got it. See you tomorrow. And so you can all look forward to a bright future in this, the city beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. May I say it's been an honor and a privilege to have you here with us today. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude and launch our fleet of streetcars, bringing Coral Gables into the modern age, there's one more matter to attend to. I want to take this opportunity to thank Alfie Banks. Without his hard work, Coral Gables wouldn't even be close to where it is today. Which brings me to the last order of business. As you all know, we have been incorporated as a city, and every city deserves a mayor. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to announce the first mayor of the city of Coral Gables. Edward Doc Dammers. Thank you, George. It's an honor. People of Coral Gables, allow me to express my excitement at this wonderful opportunity. As your mayor, I guarantee a standard of living like no other. Would you excuse me? Well, well, if it isn't Alfie Banks. Fancy running into you at the Biltmore. I thought you'd picked up and gone back to New York. Where have you been? I've been around. Oh, come on. You can't still be sore about being snubbed for mayor, can you? How did you? I'm a journalist, Banks. It's my job to notice things. 
It's been over a year. Can't you let it go? It's just, I feel like all the work I've put in over the past few years has meant nothing. Honestly, what do I have to show for it? I came down here to restore my family name, to honor my father's legacy. And instead, I've just been going around running errands like a fool. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Banks. If you're looking for a pat on the back every time you make a sale, Merrick's outfit might not be for you. Not to say he's ungrateful, he's just extremely focused and he knows how to take advantage of his resources. Take advantage is right. Anyway, I hate to put a damper on your pity party, but I came here tonight as a reporter, and I think you ought to know there's a big storm headed this way. What? Yep, they're saying it's going to be a pretty big hurricane. You might want to get home while you still have one. I'm sure they're just exaggerating. Wouldn't they have said something sooner? Weather's not easy to predict. Well, I appreciate the warning, but I'm sure things will be fine. Suit yourself. I'm going to notify the people in charge of this party. I guess she has a point. No reason to stick around here moping. I'd better get home. Excuse me, pal. I'm looking for a fellow named Tom Walsh. You know him by any chance? I'm afraid not, sorry. Perfectly fine. I suppose I'll just have to wait for him upstairs. Haven't I seen that face somewhere before? Is everybody? Surely this hurricane can't be that serious a threat. Gentlemen, thank you for meeting me here. I realize this hurricane has dealt a significant blow to our operations, but don't be alarmed. As you can see, our old sales office withstood much of the hurricane's damage, much like the city of Coral Gables itself. Things may be bad around the rest of Miami, but we will come back from this. In the past week, I've sent letters to our landowners, assuring them that we've taken minimal damage. Coral Gables will rise from the ashes like a great phoenix. Let's carry on as usual. We have a lot of catching up to do. Alfie. Before you go, could I speak with you a moment? I need a rather large favor from you. You don't say. What might that be? I've been hearing some worrying rumors concerning the Biltmore Hotel. What sort of rumors? It's no secret that organized crime has seen a spike lately, but I never thought it would reach us. I've heard stories of illicit gambling and alcohol being served somewhere in the hotel. I would appreciate it if you could investigate and report back to me. Okay, I'll see what I can find. And Alfie, please be discreet. I'll try. Excuse me. How may I help you, sir? Don't I know you from the Hotel Belmont on Flagler Street? Yes, I used to work there a few years ago. I thought so. That was the first place I stayed when I got here. Things certainly seem to have changed for the both of us since then. It does seem that way, sir. Anything interesting you can tell me about the hotel? It hasn't even been open for a year, but already I've seen more celebrities and high society folks in here than I knew existed. This place is really something special. It's definitely Mr. Merrick's finest work. You don't happen to have noticed any strange goings-on lately, have you? I'm not quite sure I follow. What do you mean, exactly? I'm thinking of certain activities which are best kept behind closed doors. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. And if I can offer a bit of advice, I don't think you should be asking these sorts of questions. Did the hurricane cause much damage to the hotel? Luckily, no. It knocked over a few trees, but no major structural damage. The hotel I used to work at downtown, though, oh, that got completely destroyed. That's a real shame. I'll say. Would have been more so if I'd still been working there. I'll let you get back to work. Yes, sir.
Now, you look like a knowledgeable sort. No reason to keep all that information to yourself, is there? How about you let slip just a little bit, and I'll be on my way. Nobody will be the wiser. I don't know anything for certain, but you might want to have a look on the 13th floor. Now please, go away and don't talk to me about it anymore. Fine. That wasn't so hard, was it? Alfie Banks. I work for George Merrick, the man who built this hotel. Well, I be da. I don't know you. And as far as I'm concerned, I got no business with you. So kindly score him out, would you? Christ, Jimmy, could you maybe try looking any more obvious? So all I gotta do is knock and tell him I'm there for Fatty's party. Great. Thanks for the heads up. I'll see you upstairs. I'm here for Fatty's party. Why didn't you say so? Come on in. Say, would you happen to know where I can find this Fatty character? Mr. Walsh rarely mingles with his guests. The only way you can see him is if you're a VIP. A VIP, huh? Well, thanks for the information. Well, well, who do we have here? I'm Alfred Banks. You must be fatty. Now, now, let's not start things off on the wrong foot. It's Mr. Walsh. Until I say otherwise, Savvy. Who are you working for, anyway? George Merrick. Oh, a real estate jobby, huh? Let me guess. The Big Cheese sent you along to do some gumshoeing and find me because he's heard we're taking over his little pet project. Am I right? Thought so. 
Come on over here. Let's have a little talk. Now, you may look like a bit of a chump, but you don't strike me as one. I'm going to level with you. I know who you are. You've been helping out this little project for quite some time, haven't you? I have, yes. For all the good that's done me. Before you go running back to Merrick and sing like a stoolie, let me make you a proposal. What say you leave that real estate baloney behind, then come work for me? I beg your pardon? Sorry, did I not make it highbrow enough for you? I'm offering you an opportunity to leave behind your current employer and find more lucrative prospects with my organization. I could use a guy like you. A guy I know can get things done. Why on earth would I want to join the mob? Oh, let's face it, the hurricane was the last nail in the coffin for the real estate market. The bubbles burst. You ain't got no future in that business, and you know it. Besides, I'm trying to help the people. There's a serious desire for alcohol in this country, and I'm providing it at reasonable prices. Wouldn't you rather be involved with a noble cause instead of swindling people by selling the worthless land? I... Come on, what do you say? I can't. I'm sorry. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a tempting offer, but I just don't think I'm suited for it. Uh-huh. Just take a little time to think things over. If you change your mind, come back and see me. I'll be here. Join the mob. Really, just who does he think I am? But then again, he's not wrong about the bubble bursting. Ever since that ship blocked the harbor, things have been incredibly slow. Working for George hasn't really gotten that bad, has it? Sure, I didn't get to be mayor, but there's always the next term, right? Although, Walsh has a point. Maybe the real estate business down here has become corrupt. If I'd done as much in New York as I had here, I'd be Merrick's boss by now. Okay, so I'll go in and just let him know there's a speakeasy on the 13th floor. He has to give me some kind of promotion for risking my safety. Hey, Banks. What is it, Wilson? Just thought you should know that Ms. Rogers is on the warpath. She's been complaining you haven't cleaned out your inbox in months, and you know how she is about tidiness. Ah, oh, right. Yes, I've been meaning to get around to that. Thanks for the warning. Well, would you look at what the cat dragged in. Alfie, you're back. I was just having a talk with Mayor Dammers about this whole situation. I said if anyone can smoke out the undesirables in my fair city, it's Alfie Banks. After all, you've been doing a great job running around for us dealing with undesirables for the past five years. Speaking of, I'm going to need your help for a few things I need done, if old Georgie will let me borrow you. We'll see, Doc. I have a few things I need him for myself. So, did you find anything? No, I didn't. I don't think there's actually anything shady going on at the Biltmore. Everything seemed fine. I see. Well, I appreciate the effort, Alfie. Don't mention it. I'll see you both later. Is it just me, or did the kid seem a bit off just then? Truth be told, he's been acting different for quite some time now, ever since we launched the streetcars. This business can really get to some people, you know that? Yes, but Banks always seemed more headstrong. Maybe it will pass. I've decided to take you up on your offer. I'm through being an errand boy for those ungrateful grifters. Excellent. I knew you'd see reason. You won't regret this, I can guarantee it. 
Now, I'm not going to lie to you, kid. You're going to be doing a lot of running around for me, too. But the difference is here, we take care of our own. So, what am I meant to be doing, exactly? I'm not going to have to kill anyone, am I? Relax, kid. It's not all murder and mayhem with us. Only when people step out of line. Now, it just so happens I've got a need for someone of your particular skill set. There's a bakery downtown called The Road. Seems kinda hinky. I'm pretty sure they're running a speakeasy behind my back. There's one thing I dislike. It's conflict. I want you to go down there and check it out. If you find that my suspicions are on point, sweet talk them into giving it up. All you gotta do is use words, not bullets. That ease your concern? I suppose so. Okay, I'll do what I can. Oh, and thank you for the employment opportunity, Mr. Walsh. Don't mention it. Dear, welcome to the Road Bakery. Let me know if there's anything that strikes your fancy. Pardon me. What can I do for you, dearie? Have you been open long? I've been living here for five years and I've never noticed this place before. Oh, we've been around for quite some time. <laughs> We're just in a different location. This place used to be a bar, you see. When they outlawed alcohol, we moved in on account of it being such a prime piece of real estate. I don't doubt it was. That's my line of work, actually. Or, I guess it used to be, anyway. How nice, dear. Did the hurricane cause you much damage? Thankfully, no, not too much. My husband was able to make repairs and get us open again. But there was quite a scene just a few blocks from here. Boats all along Biscayne Boulevard. That must have been something. I'm glad your business was spared. Oh, thank you, dear. Can I ask you a silly question? Of course, dear. You should know there's no such thing as a silly question. Let me guess. You want to know my cookie recipe? Not quite, ma'am. You're really gonna laugh when I tell you. I came here because I was asked to see if there was a speakeasy operating here. A speakeasy? Here? Oh. oh! I know, I told you you'd laugh. Oh, who on earth would think this was a speakeasy? Oh, I'm sure nobody you've heard of. Just my boss. His name's Tom Walsh, but they call him Fatty. Maybe that's why he was so interested in a bakery. Oh, you naughty thing. You've given me quite a laugh. I think you deserve a reward. Come over to the side door here and I'll give you a bag of freshly baked cookies on the house. You can take them back to your boss and let him know that's all we've got here. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. Think nothing of it. Well, just give me one moment. What the? So Fatty sent you to move in on our operation, did he? Well, he's not gonna take over here if I've got anything to say about it. Now, I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no good keister out of my bakery before I pump your guts full of lead. All right, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm going. One, two... Oh, 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 whoa! Oh. Mm. Back already? What did you find? You were right. There's definitely something going on in that place. And did you manage to set things straight? I couldn't very well do much with a Tommy gun being waved in my face. I just barely made it out of there in one piece. Disappointing. I was hoping it wouldn't come down to that. 
Ah, well, you did what you could. It ain't gonna be your concern anymore. In fact, I got something else for you. There's some local businesses in town that ain't paid up for their hooch. I need you to go put the screws on them. Are you sure I'm the right person for this job? My specialty is persuasion, not intimidation. Well, of course I know that. That's why you're gonna smooth talk them out of their dough. If that don't work, I got a backup plan. Butch here is gonna keep you company in case you meet any trouble. How you doing? I guess that'll do. So make your way over to the Alhambra Drug Store, the Gables Administration Building, and Beauregard's Diner. Did did you say Beauregard's Diner? Yeah, used to be the Gables Diner, but some upstart kid bought it a few months back and hasn't honored the previous contract. Now enough with the yap. Go do what you gotta do. Just a minute. Oh, hello. It's Banks, isn't it? Yes, how do you do? Fine, fine. I'm Herbert Freedy, by the way. Please, come in. Have a seat. How may I be of service today? Butch, could you see about getting this guy out of the office for a few minutes? I need to have a look around. Sure thing. Hey, Rughead, let's step outside for a minute. I beg your pardon? I need to talk to you in private. Outside. Now. Uh, yes. Y yes, yes, of course. Not a problem. Just, let's just step outside the door here. We need to have a talk, Mr. Freedy. What about, Mr. Banks? You enjoy your job, Mr. Freedy? I would say so, yes. Been working for Mr. Merrick long? Well, about three years now, yes. Why do you ask? I'm just a bit interested in how you got such a high-ranking position in such a short amount of time. I'm not sure what you're implying, young man, but I can assure you my credentials are what got me here, nothing else. That's good to know. We're here on behalf of Fatty Walsh. Do you know him? F -f fatty Walsh? Oh God, oh God. Listen, please, listen to me. I I I'm in a difficult position right now. I've tried to stop drinking, believe me. It's put me in terrible debt, just terrible. I thought I could just stop cold turkey, but I'm too weak. Please, I'm begging you, tell Mr. Walsh. I'll get him his money soon, but I can't go on like this. I just can't. Now, Mr. Freedy, I think we can all come out of this winners if you just listen to me. Oh, okay. Mr. Freedy, you seem like a smart man. You don't want to get hurt, I don't want you to get hurt. So I suggest you cooperate with us. Now, wait a minute. Who said anything about getting hurt? <laughs> we don't need to make a mountain out of a molehill. Just tell me what it is you want. Fatty Walsh doesn't like being stiffed. We're here to collect in blood. What? Surely you're joking. I'm just a little behind on my liquor payments. Fatty wouldn't go to such extreme measures. Would he? You clearly don't know Mr. Walsh. He's about as understanding as a rabid pit bull. I knew I should never have gotten involved with bootleggers. Mr. Freedy, I'm afraid you leave me no choice.
If you don't pay Mr. Walsh his money, you're going to end up at the bottom of Biscayne Bay wearing cement shoes. You, you wouldn't dare. I'm too important in this community to be murdered in cold blood. So what's it going to be, Freddy? Fine, fine. Tell Mr. Walsh he'll get his money by the end of the day. I hope you're proud of yourself, Banks. You certainly have a bright future ahead of you as a common thug. Compliment accepted, Mr. Freddy. I'm afraid we've got to get going. F fine. You can see yourselves out. Welcome to the Alhambra Drugstore, young man. How may I help you? How are you doing today, sir? Fine, fine. Thank you for asking. This is quite the drugstore you have here. Well, we try and provide the best service to the customers. Do you have many? Yes, we have a fair few. So, business is good? Making a decent living? Yes, yes, I would say so. Are you perhaps thinking of a career in pharmaceuticals? No, nope, just asking. I'm looking for the owner of this drugstore. Was there something in particular you needed? I have an important business matter to discuss. I see. Would you like me to pass a message along to him? Yes, please. Tell him it's in regards to a debt owed to Mr. Walsh. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, of course. I'll be sure to tell him as soon as he comes in. Any idea when that'll be? We don't mind waiting. Hard to say, really. It might be later this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, he has a few other stores, though. Maybe you could go check there? Hmm, maybe we will. Butch? Yeah? Think it's worth the trouble of trying to smoke this guy out from his other stores? Your call. I'm not too sure what he even looks like. Although I have a feeling he might just have run out the back exit. Horse feathers! Go get the car and try heading him off. I'll get after him on foot. You sure about that? He's an old man. How much trouble could it be to catch up to him? Now let's quit wasting time and get after him. So, you've been getting a little extra booze on the side from Freedy. I'm sure that would really interest Fatty. What? How did you... Come back here. Was that really necessary? Fine, fine. Tell Fatty I'll get him his money. Now get out of here and don't come back. Welcome to Beauregard's Diner, sir. Will you be wanting a booth or counter service? Neither, actually. I was wondering if I could ask you a couple questions. Uh, sure. I guess that'd be okay. I've never seen you before. Have you worked here long? It's coming up on my sixth month next week. Oh, I guess it's been longer than I thought since I've been by. Does the name Fatty Walsh mean anything to you? Can't say that it does. Sorry. I had a feeling it wouldn't. I'd like to speak to the owner. Is he in? He's in the back, but he's really busy. I'm sure he is, but it's rather urgent that I speak to him. Like I said, he's busy. Tell him his brother Alfie needs to talk to him. Now. Well, this just got interesting. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll go get him. What's this about? Good to see you too, Bo. Oh, don't give me that baloney. How many times have I seen you in the past four years? Two? Three? I know you're a fancy real estate big shot now, but you could at least have the common courtesy to keep in touch with your own brother. Yes, I know. I've been a real chump lately, and I'm sorry. But I need you to listen to me for a minute. There's some serious matters we need to discuss. Fine. I'm listening. When did you buy this place? 
Six months ago. I assume you'd have gotten one of the several messages I left you about it? I... must have gotten them mixed up with some other documents. Did the hurricane cause you any problems? Oh please, now of all times is when you decide to show some concern? I know you didn't come here just to talk about that, so what's this really about? Are you familiar with someone who goes by the name Fatty Walsh? Walsh? I think I got a note from someone named Walsh shortly after I bought the diner. Did you read it? No. I started to, but it seemed like some nonsense intended for the previous owner, so I got rid of it. Why? Who is Fatty Walsh? Bo, I need you to listen to me very carefully. Fatty Walsh is a gangster operating out of the Biltmore Hotel. He had a deal wherein he provided bootleg alcohol to the previous owner of this diner, and he expects you to continue honoring it. Expects me to? Where's my say in this? Bo, relax. Just listen to me. And how do you even know about this? Because he sent me to collect the money. But I can tell him you'll get it to him. What? You're working for the mob now? Bo, calm down. I need you to listen. No, you listen! I don't hear from you in years, and now you just show up out of the blue with some two-bit thug and try and strong-arm me to giving money to someone I've never even heard of? Hey now, there's no need for name-calling. You tell your boss there's no deal. I'm not interested in any illegal activities. Bo, wait! I have been waiting, Alfie. Didn't you hear me earlier? I'm through with this. Just do me one favor, would you? Level with me. Why have you been avoiding me all this time? Because it kills me to see you succeed. Wh what? All your life you've just sat around being babied. Well, I've had to bust my hump to take care of you and mother since father died. Then all of a sudden you decide to ride my coattails and come down here? I thought you'd be proud of me for showing some initiative. You came down here, lazed around spending mother's money for a few years, then bought a diner. Am I meant to be impressed? You've had everything handed to you on a silver platter. Do you even know half of what I've done? I should be mayor of this city. What's happened to you, Alfie? Nothing's happened. I'm just finally telling you the truth. You asked for it, after all. You're right. I did. Now get out of my diner. That was hot, woman. Oh, shut it. I have to say, that went smoother than I'd expected. You're not a bad partner, Butch. Thanks. You ain't so bad yourself. Alfie, there you are. Thank goodness I found you. Maybe you can help me understand what's going on. I've just spoken with Mr. Freedy at the administration office, and he told me that you and another man had harassed him. Why on earth would he say such a thing? I suppose now is as good a time as any to tell you I quit. What? I've gained new employment by way of Fatty Walsh. You can't be serious. As a heart attack, George. But I don't understand. Why? Weren't you happy working for me? Happy? Happy? How can you even ask that? You've never appreciated anything I've done. Now, Alfie, you know that isn't true. I looked up to you, George. The day you hired me on the Coral Gables project was one of the best I can remember. I did everything I could to help it succeed, bent over backwards to get where we are today. And how do you repay me? By making that two-bit snake oil salesman Dammers mayor instead of me! Alfie, listen. No, I'm through listening. I'm through running around like a chicken with its head cut off, and I'm through with you! When I came down here, my goal was to succeed like my father. Well, I can tell you right now, I've not only succeeded, I've surpassed anything he ever did. And I intend to surpass even the great George Merrick. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to report back to a boss who actually appreciates my hard work and doesn't just string me along like some floozy. You have yourself a nice day, sir.
So, how'd it go? The drugstore owner and Freedy will have your money by tonight. The Gables Diner deal is off. Off? What do you mean, off? The new owner's not interested in continuing the previous arrangement. A teetotaler running a diner. Go figure. Well, at least you got the other two to pay. Nice job, kid. I gotta confess, I had my doubts for a while, but you've done good. Welcome to our little family, Banks. You're gonna fit in just fine. So this is the place? Looks like kind of a dump. You'd think the biggest rum runner in Cuba would be operating out of somewhere more... refined. Things work differently down here. Not everybody is as flashy as Fatty Walsh. What was our guy's name again? Jesus, Banks, I ain't your personal secretary. It's Manny Morales we're looking for. Try to keep it in your head this time, would ya? Now enough jawing. Let's find this guy, make the deal, and get out of here. This whole island always gets me riled up. Butch. Let's talk a minute. What is it? You okay? You seem a bit more on edge than usual. I told you, Havana and I got some history that ain't so great. Care to elaborate? Not particularly. Look, I'll be fine. Once we finish, I'll just pop another sedative for the flight home and everything will be swell. You mentioned you got sedatives? Could I have one? Do I look like some kind of dope peddler to you? No, I just thought having one might come in handy planning on slipping someone a mickey, are you? Okay, I'm not gonna judge. Knock yourself out. That isn't quite my plan, but thanks. You know anything else about this Morales guy? I've heard the boss mention him a couple of times, but aside from what I already told you, nothing. Do you think he knows we're coming? Guess we'll find out, won't we? Why does everything we do have to be so opaque? Because if you go shouting your business from the rooftops, there's a good chance you'll wind up getting clipped. Let's get back to it. Pardon me, miss. What do you need, darling? May I ask what it is you're waiting for out here? Clients. Clients? What's your business exactly? Oh, you Yankees are so cute. She's a streetwalker, kid. Surprised you couldn't tell from a mile away. Oh, I see. Do you got any plans for tonight? Uh, afraid so, miss. Too bad. Anything you can tell me about Havana? It's the city where I grew up. You want a tour, you came to the wrong place. But if you want a good time that you can't get back in your country, you came to the right bar. Do you happen to know Manny Morales? Who is asking? I don't think you need to know those details, young lady. Suffice to say, we're here on business from Miami. I see. I didn't think you looked like a regular tourist. You're here to make a deal on the rum, aren't you? How did you... You and your friend talk very loudly. Mr. Morales' office is behind the side door inside the bar, but he won't just let you in. He's very paranoid. You must give a password if you're going to get inside. And do you know this password? I might. I might even be able to tell you what it is, for the right price. Name it. There is a man inside the bar. His name is Umberto. You'll recognize him by his stylish dress sense. He procured my services last week and still has not paid. Get my money from him and I'll tell you the password. Thank you for your time. See you later, handsome. Mind if I join you for a moment? Not at all. Please, have a seat. The name's Alfie Banks, by the way. Humberto Suarez. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Banks. You seem like a man with taste. You in here regularly? I am, Jess. I find this place is an excellent spot to unwind. Aside from that, we get many tourists like yourself in here, which gives me the chance to practice my English. Can you tell me anything about Manny Morales? I see him in here regularly, but I've rarely spoken with him. People of that sort are not the type I wish to associate with. I'm sure you understand. 
I had a little chat with the girl outside. She says you owe her some money. I'm sure I have no idea what you are talking about. Is that so? Mr. Banks, if you wish to come in here and join me for drinks, that is one thing. But to blatantly insult my honor by implying that I would hire that floozy? Relax, it was just a question. I meant no harm by it. <laughs> Listen, I feel bad about what I said earlier. Can I make it up to you by getting you a drink? I won't say no to that. What are we drinking? Some whiskey, perhaps. An interesting choice. Arturo, try me those whiskeys. Thank you, Mr. Banks. That was quite enjoyable. If you'd like to have some more, I will not say no. Butch, let's talk a minute. What is it? Could you deal with Umberto? He's not very cooperative. Sorry, kid, but this ain't the USA. I'm not much for starting international incidents just for the hell of it. I'm not getting my hands dirty here unless I absolutely have to. Butch, I need you to help me out with a distraction. What do you need me to do? Get Umberto's attention while I'm sitting at the table. I'll give you the signal when I'm ready. Okay, I'll be waiting. Let's get back to it. Mind if I join you for a moment? Not at all. Please, have a seat. How about we have another drink? Excellent. What are we drinking? Some whiskey, perhaps. An interesting choice. Arturo, try me those whiskeys. Uh, excuse me. Do you speak o the English? I want el drinko. Pronto. Really? Such rudeness. Thank you, Mr. Banks. That was quite enjoyable. If you'd like to have some more, I will not say no. This is what Umberto was carrying. I hope it's enough to settle his debt. Eh, it will have to do. If you want to get into Si Morales, just knock on the door and tell whoever opens the slot that Rosalinda sent you. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Rosalinda sent me. Well, this don't look so good. What the hell happened here? Looks like our friend got himself a bad case of lead poisoning. He doesn't look like he's been dead very long, but I didn't hear any shots. Something ain't right here. This has set up written all over it. I'll have a look around, see if I can find anything that might tell us more. So Morales at least knew Fatty existed. Maybe he was expecting us. Someone beat us to the punch, it seems. Hmm, these windows are the only other possible way out of here, and they're both locked. So Morales was meeting with someone already, even though he knew about Fatty. Wait a minute. Butch, we've been so wrapped up in figuring out what happened that we forgot the most obvious question. If Morales was already dead when we got here, then who opened the door? Gentlemen, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, 
but the Havana Rum running trade is currently under new management. Who the hell are you supposed to be? I'm the new boss. Same as the old boss, I'd wager. Be quiet, Yankee. Why did you kill Morales? It was time for a change of the business. He held a monopoly on rum export for far too many years now, not giving others like me a chance to shine. I would say that was rather unfair, wouldn't you? We came here to make a deal on behalf of Fatty Walsh back in Miami. Yes, I know this. I'm sorry, but as the new head of the business, I will have to politely decline your offer. I don't think Fatty will be too pleased by that. That's not my problem. I have more reputable clients I can deal with. Walsh is nothing to me. You sure about that, Chico? <laughs> Please, put the gun away. There is no need for this nonsense. There will be no deal with Walsh. That is final. Now please, be on your way before I... What did you do that for? The asshole deserved it. Now let's get out of here before these Cubans start asking questions. This is just great. Another assignment gone to pot. You really need to work on that itchy trigger finger of yours, Butch. Look, I said I was sorry. Is that what we're supposed to say to Fatty? Sorry, we couldn't make the deal because Butch shot the guy in the face? Banks, I'm really starting to... Gentlemen, please. I've heard married couples bigger or less than you two. Stay out of this, would you? Fine. If you want to go back to your boss of failure, I will. What are you talking about? The man who went in and killed Morales was Rogelio Vargas, the only other major rum runner in town. His takeover attempt has been a long time coming. The other night, Morales told me about his meeting with Fatty Walsh's men. I knew Vargas hated Walsh and would make his move if he knew about the deal. So I tipped him off. Vargas took care of Morales and you took care of Vargas, as I expected. So you played us all, but why? Isn't it obvious? There is now a vacancy in the bootleg rum trade. You can go home and tell your boss I'll be happy to open up a route for him. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, how about that? Let's go, Butch. I'm starting to see why you and Havana don't get along. So, we still on for next week, Rosa? Wouldn't miss it for anything, handsome. Fine, I'm coming, I'm coming. What? Boss wants to see you. Says it's important. Fine, tell him I'll be up in a few minutes. <sighs> Who is that? Mrs. Grundy. Come to tell us the party's over. Oh, forget that noise. Just come back to bed. Afraid I can't. I'm not in the habit of ignoring orders from upstairs. Oh, fine. Your loss. Will you be long, handsome? Not to worry, sweetheart. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Why don't you go ahead and freshen up for when I get back? <laughs> yes, sir. Glad you could step away from the broads and bulls long enough to come see me. Are you gonna give me a hard time, or are you gonna tell me what needs to be done? Hey, easy now. No need to throw an ing-bang over there. Here's the problem. I've been hearing about some chump out in the swamp brewing his own moonshine and trying to compete with me. The day some classless redneck pulls one over on Fatty Walsh is the day I die. I need you to go out there, find his shack, and sabotage his operation. The Everglades are huge! How am I supposed to find one shack in the middle of all that swampland? You'll find a way. There's a camp of prospectors settled near the start of the Tamiami Trail. They'll probably know a thing or two. Right. I'll take care of it. Oh, and before you go, take this. It could be pretty hairy out there, so if you run into any trouble, you won't be left high and dry. Finally seeing fit to give me my own gun, huh? It's been long enough. You've earned it. Now get out there and see what you can find.
Hello, sir. What do you want, city boy? What exactly are you doing out here? Trying to find something of value. This land's been worthless since the hurricane in 26, but it might be good for farming. I haven't had too much luck so far. Anything I should know about the Everglades? Well, it's full of critters that just love to take a bite out of your fancy suit. I wouldn't stray too far from here unless you've got good reason to. You seem like a man who's seen a fair bit. Do you know of any moonshine runners set up out here? Moonshine? I never touch the stuff myself. You got the wrong person if you're looking for it. It's not quite like that. Let's just say I'm looking for one particular individual for other reasons. Well, now, I ain't gonna ask too many questions. Because you city folk don't bring nothing but trouble. But, I can tell you the surest way to find a moonshine runner is to follow the smoke. Smoke? Sure. The stills let up an awful lot of smoke. They try and hide it so the law won't catch them, see. But, they usually leave some sort of instructions on how to find them as a backup. Matter of fact, I found this old piece of paper behind a tree the other day. Maybe it'll come in useful to you. I see. Thanks for the information. I'll be going now. Go on. Get it. Could I borrow your machete? Can't imagine a fancy suit like yourself using one of these. Go ahead. It'll be fun to watch. Go on, get out of here!
Ha! Found you. Doesn't seem like that's too far away. As long as I can keep that direction, I should be able to make it there before nightfall. Hey, don't go in there! Huh, what? Who's there? You got no business here. Get away before I pump you full of lead. Cut it out, you stupid chump. The place is gonna blow. Ah, get bent. You're gonna be sorry when I come back out here. No, you idiot! So it's done? You put him out of business? Yes, it's done. He won't be a problem anymore. You rubbed him out, huh? I didn't mean to, but yes. I like your style. Didn't have you pinned for a button man. It was an accident, I swear. How was I supposed to know he'd come back when the stills were rigged to blow? Ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it? I killed a man. You get used to it. It's all part of the business. Well, maybe I don't want to get used to it. In fact, Maybe I don't want to be part of this business anymore. Look, you're upset. I get it. It ain't easy bumping someone off. I was pretty upset my first time, too. But get that don't want to be a part of it baloney out of your head. You ain't going anywhere. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, that's more like it. Look, I'm having a big party tonight. Come by, have a few drinks, take your mind off things. All right. Maybe I will. Good. I got an especially big job for you tomorrow, so let's celebrate tonight and discuss the particulars in the morning. See you later, kid. Mobsters. Real estate agents. What's the difference, anyway? This ends tonight, fatty. I'll make you see reason one way or another. I might not get out of this alive, but I sure as hell can't keep living like this.
So, they've got you guarding the party, huh? Beats having to go and get my suit dirty out in the swamp. What's the occasion for this party, anyway? I think it's one of his girl's birthdays or something. You know, fatty. He'll throw a party just because he had a particularly pleasing bowel movement. First time in a while he's come out to mingle with the guests, though. Must be feeling pretty good. Keep up the good work, Butch. Hold on there, Alfie. You know the rules. I gotta search you. Fine, but make it quick. Can't let you in carrying a piece, Alfie. You know how the boss is. If you want to come in, you're gonna have to hand it over. Fine. Here. Okay, you're clear. Go ahead. Mr. Walsh? Make it snappy, kid. I got a lot riding on black. Some party. Thanks, kid. Glad you're enjoying yourself. Of course, things would be a lot better if that damn delivery would get here already. I'm starting to get impatient. You mentioned a delivery? Yeah, that's right from the bakery. You know, the one the old bag used to run? They're supposed to be sending a cake, but it ain't here yet. Come to think of it, could you be a lamb and go check on it for me? I'm not your errand boy, Mr. Walsh. Maybe you should ask someone else. Actually, I think you'll find you are. So get to it. Mr. Walsh, we need to talk. Not now, kid. I'm busy. No, you're gonna listen to me now. No, I'm gonna put five on red now. Now get out of my face before I get ticked off. Never mind. My gun, please. Here you go. Why aren't I allowed inside with my gun? Increased security. Fatty's in the main room tonight, so nobody comes in with a piece. What's he so worried about? Guy like Fatty's got lots of enemies. Especially after that business with Rothstein last year. I'm sure you can live without it for a couple of hours. Keep up the good work, Butch. How'd you wind up getting this gig? Fatty said I looked the part. Never trust a skinny baker, he said. I guess you can't really argue with that logic. The apron really suits you. Thanks. So, Fatty kept this place going as a bakery? Yeah. Can't say I blame him, though. It's a good side business. Nice for laundering, you know? Not to mention always having sweets available. Now you're starting to understand. I hear there's supposed to be a cake delivery to the Biltmore tonight. That's right, for Fatty's party. Al's in the back putting the finishing touches on it. But then, he's been doing that for hours. He's obsessed with getting it just right. I had no idea he was this high strung. I just hope he gets it done in time, or we're all gonna get it. Take it easy. You too. Hey, Al. How's it going? Thanks. I haven't got time to chat right now. I need to have this cake absolutely perfect by tonight or there's gonna be hell to pay.
Hold on there, Alfie. You know the rules. I gotta search you. Fine, but make it quick. Okay, you're clear. Go ahead. Boss, big trouble. The coppers are on their way. Someone tipped them off and they're coming to raid us. Wouldn't you just know it right during a winning streak, too? Okay, you know the drill. Flip the switches and clear everyone out. Party's over, folks. Everybody kindly scram. Oh, boss, there's just one more thing. Yeah? <laughs> what the hell was that? He had it coming. Some of the guys up north felt he was getting too big for his britches, so I got the order to cut him down. So what happens to us now that Fatty's gone? Who's in charge, I mean? Sorry to bust your bubble, but it ain't you. They'll send someone else from up north in the next couple of days. That's how this works. So much for loyalty. Don't give me that crap, Banks. You've been doing this long enough to know that it's all about knowing your place and doing what you're told. So that story about the police coming was just a distraction? Oh, no, no, they're coming all right. They need to find the bodies so this makes the news. Now, enough standing around. Butch, wait. Huh? You're just gonna leave? What am I supposed to do? Oh, yeah, about that. The coppers are gonna need someone to pin this on. I'm sorry to say, you drew the short straw, kid. No hard feelings, huh? Oh, I'm locking the elevator behind me, so don't bother trying to follow. What? How can you just... I better figure out another way out of here, and fast. Banks, over here. Easy there, fellas. Let this guy through. He's with me. Is what they're saying true? Fatty Walsh is dead? I think I'd prefer to plead the fifth on that one, Miss Douglas. It's not exactly a secret that you were working for him. Maybe not, but I've realized it's time for another career change. Well, I'm afraid you're out of luck if you were planning on going back to Coral Gables. Our friend, George Merrick, got ousted from the city commission last June. Just as well, really, I was starting to get sick of writing all that bait-and-hook baloney. There's a new mayor, too. Dammers had some medical issue and went back up north. Is that so? In any case, the boom's over. It's all gone bust now. Fact is, the whole world is changing. 
Yes, I'm beginning to get that impression. So what's next for you? Aside from dodging the police, that is. I'm not sure, but I'll try and figure something out. Good night, Miss Douglas, and thanks. I guess I owe you one. Don't mention it. Good night, Mr. Banks, and good luck. Something tells me we're all going to be needing quite a lot of it very soon. Another round for you, Bill? Sure, why not? Ever since they started letting us drink again, I just can't say no. So, has the old sad sack been in tonight? Not yet, but it's coming up on nine. He should be here any minute. You know, he may be a real son of a bitch, but I can't help but feel sorry for him. Well, I don't. Plenty of people are hurting these days. A whole bunch are way worse off than him. I'll take those poor folks in the Dust Bowl, for example. I anyway, just because he used to be a real estate big shot doesn't give him the excuse to be disagreeable. But hey, as long as he pays and keeps to himself, I have no quarrel with him. Maybe I can get him going tonight and see if we can finally find out if he was really working for the mob. Well, speak of the devil. Good evening, Mr. Banks. What'll it be tonight? Gin and tonic, and go easy on the tonic. Yes, sir. Will this be on your tab? It is every other night. Why should tonight be any different? Here you are, sir. Say, you got a light, pal? Thanks, buddy. Have I got horns coming out of my forehead or something? No, sir. Then why are you staring at me like I do? You used to work in real estate, didn't you? Yeah, so? What of it? So, I'm curious about what it was like to be right in the middle of the land boom. But really, I'm more curious about what happened afterwards. Is it true you were working for Fatty Walsh? Don't know what you're talking about. And if I were you, I'd stop asking those sorts of questions before things get unpleasant. Oh, is that a threat? This is exciting. Are you threatening me? Bill, knock it off. Does this answer your question? Oh, my head. Well, I suppose I've woken up in worse spots than this before. Hmm, what's that over there on the wall? Coral Gables, the Golden Galleon. Huh, the days when I was an upstart kid who was gonna make something of himself and restore the family name. Look where that got me. Ah, forget it. Life's too short to hold grudges. After all, if it hadn't been for Merrick, I'd probably be panhandling in Bryan Park right now. Might as well go see how the old bird is doing these days. Can't possibly be worse off than me. This place hasn't changed one bit. At least something from the old days is still around. I'll 
Sophie Banks? What on earth are you doing here? Mrs. Merrick, I know it's been a while, and I'm sorry. Ten years is much more than a while in my book, young man. In any case, I'm afraid you've picked a bad time to call. What's the matter? It's George, that stubborn fool. He's gonna get himself killed. Killed? How? You mean you haven't heard? There's a hurricane coming. They're saying it might be as bad as the one in 26. It's set to pass through the Keys tomorrow afternoon. So, why hasn't anyone prepared here? Because it's not expected to come this far north. Then there's something I'm not understanding. How exactly is George in danger? We've been living down in Matacumbe Key for the past few years. George opened up a fishing club and we've been running it together ever since he was ousted from the city commission. When he heard the hurricane was coming, he sent me up here and refused to budge. He said he wasn't going to let his dream die twice. That's crazy! We have to get him out of there! I'm afraid there isn't much that can be done. They've stopped all the trains going south. There has to be a way. Don't worry, ladies. I'll get George back here safely. I owe him that much, at least. Please be careful, Alfie. And good luck. Begging your pardon, sir. What can I do for you? Didn't you used to be a guard at the Dinner Key Marina? Yes, I did. Until I got fired for letting some jerk steal a part from a hydroplane. Took me years to be able to convince anyone to hire me back. Oh. Uh, sorry to hear that. When does the next train leave? It doesn't. What? Well, haven't you heard? There's a hurricane set to strike the Keys. Yes, I have, actually. Well, then you should know that all the trains have been cancelled. You don't understand. It's of the utmost importance that I get down to the Keys. I do understand. And I'm afraid you're out of luck, friend. There's only one train going down there, and it's not for passengers. Why not? Because it's being sent to evacuate the WPA construction workers who haven't left yet. If you need to take a fishing trip, I suggest you wait a few days. There's something important we need to discuss. Is there? Do tell. Look, friend, it's extremely important I get on that train. I have official business in the Keys, and I need to get down there as soon as possible. Official business? Who would schedule anything with a hurricane about to strike? You'd be surprised. Some of us can't get a break. Well, I hear you there. My bosses have been giving me nothing but a hard time for years. But I still don't see why I should let you on this train. A man might die if I don't go down and save him. Can you really live with that on your conscience? And if I let you go down there, you might get yourself killed too. And then I'd have two deaths on my conscience. So unless you give me an extraordinary reason, you're not getting on this train. I need to save George Merrick. He's in danger. Merrick? The Coral Gables guy? What's he doing down there? He's been running a fishing club, but he's insisted on staying behind. Please, you don't know him like I do. He's very stubborn and passionate. If I don't go down there, he won't budge and he'll probably die. Well, fine. I don't know why I'm doing this, but go ahead and get on. But if anyone asks, you don't tell them I let you on board. Deal. Ah, can't see a thing. We should be well on our way. Now I just need to find a way out of this car. The storm seems to have made landfall already. Horse feathers! Sticking around back here probably isn't the best idea. I should head towards the front of the train.
What? Who are you? What are you doing on this train? The name's Banks. I snuck on board because I need to get to the Keys. You're crazy. What were you thinking? I thought this train was meant to be taking supplies down there. It was, but the people who sent it underestimated the power of the storm. We're only going forward because there's no way to turn back. The train is already starting to come apart. You're lucky it came up here when you did. I was just about to detach the locomotive. But why? Because if even one car gets blown off the tracks, the rest of the train will too. It's not worth... Damn it! I was afraid this would happen. If we don't equalize the pressure in this car, in the next few minutes it'll come apart. Help me get one of these windows open, would ya? Good going, guys. Now let's get to the locomotive so we can detach the train. Otherwise, we'll be swept off the tracks along with the rest of it. The wind seemed to have died down slightly. We must be entering the eye of the storm. Or maybe not. I'd better find George. There isn't much time. George, open this door right now! Alfie Banks? I have to admit, you were the last person I expected to see walking through that door. What brings you to my little club? I came to get you, George. In case you weren't aware, there's a huge hurricane on its way. I am well aware, yes. In fact, I sent Eunice away because of it. I know. She's the one who told me where I could find you. I see. I have to confess, I don't fully understand why you've come. But as long as you're here, go ahead and have a seat. I haven't got time to talk. We have to leave. I insist. Besides, I'm not going anywhere. George? Yes? George, I know we didn't see eye to eye last time we spoke, and things haven't changed. I still respect you, but I also stand by what I said. I can't change the way you feel, and I'm sorry things had to go the way they did. So, now that we've got that out of the way, what else is on your mind? So, what have you been doing with yourself the past few years? Well, I'm sure you heard about the bust. Coral Gables went bankrupt, and I was forced to step down from the commission. I always enjoyed it down here in the Keys, and Eunice's family just happened to own this property. So we came down here and opened up the fishing club. It's been a much quieter life than I'm used to, but I can't complain. I suppose I had my time to shine. Couldn't the others have done something for you? What about Doc? I assume you didn't hear that Doc passed away five years ago. No, I didn't. Huh. Did you know this hurricane was coming? I had heard, yes. The weatherman had been talking about it on the radio the past few days. They seem to take them a bit more seriously down here in the Keys. Why haven't you evacuated? Ever heard the old saying, the captain always goes down with his ship? I never abandoned Coral Gables. I see no reason why I should abandon the Caribbean Club. Coral Gables was lucky. It didn't get the worst of the hurricane in 26. You're right in the path of this one. That may be, but I think I've taken sufficient precautions. George, we need to leave. Isn't there any way I can convince you? You did a pretty good job of convincing plenty of other people in the old days. I'm not opposed to hearing what you have to say. So, Alfie, why is it so important we go back? Coral Gables needs you back, George. It's just not the same without you. Oh, I hardly think that's true. Coral Gables has been fine without me the past few years. We had our moment in the sun. It's time for a new generation to take over. There's still so much left to do in Coral Gables. You can't just give up now. Oh, really? This is an interesting change of attitude. Didn't you give up on Coral Gables when you decided to work for Tom Walsh? I saw the way things were headed and decided to go for a more lucrative opportunity. 
For which I can hardly blame you, but I just wish you hadn't jumped ship so soon. What else was I supposed to do? Drown with the rats? I don't share your optimism, George. I still can't understand how you never felt tempted to just give up yourself. Who says I didn't? Do you think you're the only one who saw what was going on? The Depression came to Coral Gables years before the rest of the country. There were days when I thought about packing it all in. I knew when the bubble had burst, but I worked too hard to just give everything up. I stayed until they threw me out. I... I didn't know that. I thought you were just naive. We all have our bad days, Alfie. Sometimes it's bad weeks, or even months. But what's important above all else is sticking to your principles. I understand what you're saying, George, but times have changed. Principles are important, surely, but the depression and lack of money is all anyone thinks about. You made the city beautiful, sparing no expense, making it all about the aesthetics. But think about the value of that city and the current economic climate. Someone in charge wouldn't think twice about tearing down the Biltmore to sell the land if it meant a profit. And all the work we did, all the sacrifices people made, would have meant nothing. I hadn't even considered that possibility. I can't in good conscience allow something like that to happen. It seems living down here all these years has made me a bit out of touch. All right, Alfie. As soon as this storm passes, we'll take the first train back to Miami so I can assess the situation myself. Thank you for helping me see things a bit more clearly. I think I'm the one who should be thanking you for that, George. Right. Let's get a move on. We should be careful. It sounds like the storm has gotten stronger. George, this building is coming apart. We haven't got any time to lose. We need to get someplace safer. When we get out there, we need to head directly for the shelter south of here. Just follow me, and we'll be there in no time. Right behind you. George, watch out! The ceiling is collapsing! Ladies and gentlemen, today we remember a very special man whose life was unfortunately cut short. Alfie Banks was someone who wasn't afraid to speak his mind. In fact, he certainly gave me a piece of it one of the last times I spoke with him. However, at heart he was a kind soul. Alfie cared about the well-being of others, even if they wronged him, and that takes class. In the time I knew and worked with him, Alfie always showed an immense amount of initiative, which makes it no surprise that he achieved as much as he did. Despite harder times in his last few years, he showed in the end that he was a good man. I would not be here speaking to you right now if it weren't for him. Not only do I owe my life to him, but my livelihood as well. Though I may not have expressed it as clearly as I should have, Alfie was instrumental in the success of Coral Gables. I'm sure he knew that. And though he was taken from us far too soon, Alfie's legacy will live on in the streets and buildings of this city. Because, just like the galleon which came to be the symbol of Coral Gables, Alfie sailed through all our lives, leaving behind a golden wake. <laughs>